Solutions is a company that, together with their partners, provide virtual tax consultation and preparation for individuals, small business, and nonprofit. They also provide notary and a host of other business-related services for their clients. Their associates provide a systematic yet very client-centered approach to their services. They offer the industry knowledge and insight to help solve your most complex tax issues. At Remington, their currency is time, the one resource that cannot be replenished. For that reason, they utilize the simplest and most effective forms of technology to make their services faster and more efficient. No need to wait in the office until your taxes are completed. Simply upload your documents via the Taxes to Go app or via their client portal and they'll take care of the rest. Remington Tax Solutions is a member of the National Association of Tax Professionals and participates in the IRS Annual Filing Season Program, which is a voluntary tax education program to stay abroad rest of the ongoing changes in tax legislation. Remington Tax Solutions has a strong connection to the communities in which they serve. It is a part of their mission to make a positive impact on the lives of their neighbors. So, if you're looking for a reliable, effective, and trustworthy tax preparation service, Remington Tax Solutions is the business for you. Contact Remington Tax Services at their number 682-307-4410 or simply go to RemingtonTax.com that's RemingtonTax.com. Remington Tax Service, virtual tax preparation for the individual and small business. Live clean, eat cleaner. The only natural and patented produce wash. Eat Cleaner is a tasteless, odorless, and lab-tested line of food wash and wipes that is up to 99.9% .9 more effective than water and cleaning wax. The only natural patented produce wash in a 14-day study applying Eat Cleaner all-natural fruit vegetable wash to a variety of fruit and 100 pure guaranteed vegetables also prolongs shelf life up to five times longer through a natural blend of fruit acids and antioxidants. This can help save your family on average of over $500 per year, reducing waste and making it easy to get your half plate of fruit and vegetables each day. Eat Cleaner offers a wide variety of solutions for food safety and shelf life extension for consumers, retailers, food service, and operators. USDA bio-based, OMRI listed for use on organic produce, non-GMO, vegan, gluten-free, made in the USA, lab proven, and patented. So if you want cleaner fruits and veggies, try Eat Cleaner. Check the link in the description section below. is your escape. It's your opportunity to create a moment for stillness, for reflection, for yourself. It's your connection to a world of senses, flavors both exotic and familiar, energizing and relaxing. It's your retreat from an increasingly turbulent world. It's the perfect paradox of simplicity and complexity. Teabox.com connects tea to people, uniting the richest flavors of the finest teas with the curious, the cultivated, and the adventurous all over the world. The freshest tea you've ever tasted from crop to cup. There's simply no simpler way to experience the wonderful complexity of tea. Tea box, packing up the freshness. Tea thrives on freshness, and so do they. Tea box temperature and humidity control facility ensure that tea is maintained. The teas themselves go into an oblique bags with aluminum layers that protect them from excess moisture and light. With tea box, shopping for fresh, loose leaf tea is easy because you make an informed purchase and you know exactly where your tea is coming from. So for the freshest teas in the world, check out teabox.com. That's right, teabox.com. Check the link in the description section below. Are you a boxing fan? Check out Ring Kings Boxing only on the PRO Media Network. The Klein's family has been getting people to go nuts for old nuts since 1995. As legends have it, a number of the Klein's friends who heard the idea said you can go nuts trying to name a store like that. In the excitement, the Klein's thought their friends said old nuts instead of go nuts and proceeded to throw caution to the wind. Old nuts has over 2,000 items bulk and wholesale prices of a whole lot of your favorite fruits 
nuts and confessions a selection of gift baskets for any budget any occasion and provides one of the best and impressively rated shopping experiences on the web fact is between their selection service speed or their online presence in the virtual mirror retail experience they have developed an enviable client base that's comprised of personal and professional customers who count on their remarkable range of gift baskets think of gift basket think about old nuts check them out oldnuts.com check the link in the description section Go Tigers, 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 go like you always say, welcome, welcome, welcome. Number one sports talk indeed. Uh, we ain't like the Falcons, we won't blow the lead. Look, all we talk is who that, uh, who got cut and who back. Uh, Rookies in the vets, uh, players you should look at. Yeah. It's the sports coma, you don't want to miss it. Got the pre-game, party, post-game statistics. Get a visit for Sway, maybe DC or five. It's the hottest thing smoking, big Q in the guys. Go to YouTube and live, make sure you subscribe. In the views inside, the Saints locker room high. Talk to Drew, Jordan, Zach, Peyton. New Orleans, who that nation? Best believe when I say we be golden black. Ain't a miracle or rivalry could ever hold us back. No, Beast Quake, Bounty Gate, let the truth be told. It's the sports coma, all we know is say Super Bowl. Yeah. You're listening to the sports coma with Big Q and the guys on the PRO Media Network. Did, um, I noticed you were wearing like tape last week on your shoulder. Is that because of that? Because you're a routine guy. Usually you don't change that up. Hey, I'm 41 years old. I got a lot of stuff going on, but <laughs> just keep ticking. Next one from John DeShazer. Uh, Drew, speaking of 41 and Tom being 43, um, guys, obviously the veteran quarterbacks. Um, is that a testament to what you guys have been able to do, maintaining that you guys are have your teams where you do right now. You know, it's a league where everybody's always kind of looking for the, the new young thing, and yet you guys are are battling for first place in the division. Yeah, listen, um, we both play on very good teams for for very good organizations, for great coaches and great systems, great players around us. So. Um, just grateful for the opportunity to compete. Grateful that we're in a, in a situation where we're battling, you know, here in the division. Thanks. This one's from Mike Triplett. Drew, uh, it's kind of a small sample size, but over the last couple of years, you've been even better against the Blitz than years past. Really, like, terrific numbers against the Blitz. Is, is there anything that makes you just feel really comfortable when, when teams blitz you or that you think you're doing really well recently? Well, typically when teams blitz, they're exposed. You know, it's risk reward, right? Um, so if you know where to go with the football, you got guys that can get open, you can make big plays. And, and that being said, Tampa Bay blitzes more than any other team in the league, and they've had a lot of success. So if you almost, if you almost invite that, do you, do you hope defenses try to blitz you? Listen, they're they're very good at it. Um, you know, you look at them statistically. Obviously, they're just a very aggressive style. You know, that's 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 Todd Bowles, and um, that's why he's one of the very best. And um, you can tell those guys play extremely hard for them, and they've got a very good scheme. They've got very good players. You know, they can get after you with the pass rush, whether they're rushing four, or they're rushing five or six. Um, at the end of the day, they're just they're playing at a high level. They're playing with a lot of confidence. Thanks, Mr. Ricardo Lacant. Drew, you and um, uh, Tom, of course, are a, a, you're right now one and two in, in career touchdown passes. Um, I'm not really going to ask if you're looking at that record or if you're focusing on that, but just as a fan of the game, is it kind of just maybe unique or maybe just absurd that a record like that has been being set and reset like almost every week? Yeah, I mean, I'd say it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, uh, you know, when, when in history has that ever happened? Um, again, I, I think, I know speaking for myself, I'm just laser focused on 
the job that is right in front of me and the opportunity that, that we have this week. And winning the football game is the most important thing, and however we can get that done. Next one from Amish Morrell. Uh, yeah, Drew, you kind of talked about the, the Tampa defense. Uh, do you think that maybe because of the way Alvin's been performing as a receiver out of the backfield that that might open up some things uh, in the running game despite the fact that they're, you know, tops in the league uh, run-wise? Yeah, I mean, listen, we, we want to be a balanced offense. We feel like we are a balanced offense and a very complimentary one. And so um, every element of our, of our uh, offense we want to be effective with, we want to be efficient. And, um, you know, from game to game, we expect to do a little bit of everything. Um, now, depending on, you know, the way a, a team chooses to game plan you or, or the plan that they have for you, you know, some things may end up working better than others. And maybe you hang your hat on certain things more so than others um, on any given Sunday. But at the end of the day, I think that that's what makes us dangerous, in a, uh, dangerous as an offense is we've got some versatile players, some guys that can do a lot of things, um, especially Alvin. Um, and our ability to run the football inside, outside, the screen game, the shot game, the play action, the drop back, the quick game. You know, you combine all that together and you do it fast and, and execute effectively, it makes you tough to defend. Next one from Jack Doucette. You're on mute. I'm sorry. Uh, I could see your lips moving, I just couldn't read them. <laughs> You're not that good. You're really good for nothing. Um, Drew, uh, for years, Monday Night Football was the game to watch, kind of like the big game of the week. It really looks like it's transitioned to Sunday night. That's the one that everyone's watching, uh, all the hype and everything. I mean, even at this stage of your career, is that a little extra juice to prove that, hey, I can still do this while everyone's watching? Well, I think just the opportunity, the opportunity to compete, you know, regardless of, of whether anybody's watching or not. Um, you just kind of click in, and there's a job to do, and we're blessed with the opportunity to compete. Um, love to win, but at the end of the day, just love to execute effectively and put guys in positions to succeed and, and win. Obviously, winning feels good. Just one more quick question, Drew. Uh, I mean, years back, I remember Reggie Bush almost caught 90 passes in a single season when he was a rookie. How, how does Alvin compare in terms of a running back who can catch the football and get you first downs on you know third and five and whatnot. Yeah, I mean similar in the fact that they're both such dynamic players, you know, such great athletes, such you know matchup problems for a defense. Um, listen, I'd say Tampa has two of the best linebackers in the league, maybe maybe the two best tandem. Um, so those guys are great athletes; they can cover, you know. But but for the most part, you know, linebackers can't cover Alvin Kamara, you know, and um, you know that's that's where you know as you kind of look at the array of weapons that we have and the way that we spread guys out and move guys around and, um, you know, the tempo at which we play at the end of the day, you know, our job is to put those guys in great matchup positions. It's my job to find those those matchups and get those guys the ball. Next one from Luke Johnson. Drew, we've seen Alvin uh, run those, those choice routes uh, with a lot of success this year. Uh, what makes him, him good at that and, and how much of that is like preparation and and understanding uh, you know, where you got to bend after the play starts? Well, it, it, it takes a guy with great feel, with great patience um, and understanding and um, timing. Um, and the great thing about choice routes, as you say, is that you have a three-way go. So um, in most cases, the defense can't be right. This one's from John Schazer. That's Drew Brees, family. Who that to the beautiful black and gold family members in the live stream. Much love to you and yearns on this Wednesday Saints talk. Big ups to the family members indeed. Much love to you guys. And welcome to another installment of the Great Saint Think Tank, also known as the Sports Coma. Big ups to the family members in this thing. What's happening? What's good with it, family? Big ups to you and yearn. Big ups indeed. Big ups. Welcome, welcome. Like always, customarily and traditionally, say for over five years now, welcome, welcome, welcome. You're now rocking with the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys, where we have intense, entertaining, educating, and enlightening sport talk from your favorite sports family. I'm Big Q, your host. You are the great Saint Think Tank, 
the best of the black and gold nation, the who that nation is in the building, baby. What's happening? What's good with it? Tyra, what's up, baby? Good to see you in the live stream. Big ups to you and Yearn. Trail Hatch, who that to you? Javier, who that to you? Devin C, who that to you? David Kemp, who that to you? Brother Jerry, who that to you? Marty Frost, what up, Marty? Who that to you? Brian Pearson, who that to you? William Dickerson, who that to you? Ferg 318, who that to you? Tramal, who that to you? Sat Scott, who that to you? Abraham, who that to you? My dog Abraham, what up, fam, all the way out in Sacktown. Big ups to you. Who else we got? KB, what's up, KB? Who that to you? Professor PT504, who that to you? Till, my dog Till in the building. What up, Till? Who that to you? Big ups to my dog Till. GM Kev in the building. Who that to you? Eternal Absolute, who that to you? Gabriel Thomas, who that to you? DJ Austin, who that to you? Josh Goat 23, who that to you? Jacob Dauphiny, who that to you? Big ups to you, Jacob. Good to see you in the chat, family. Who that who that nation? That driver, Ricky. What's up, Ricky? How you doing, fam? Brian Spears, who that to you? Derek, what's up, D? I ain't seen you in a while, man. What's up, Derek? Who that to you? Good to see my dog, Derek Lockett, in the building. Big ups to you. And all the beautiful black and gold family members chiming in the live stream. If I didn't give you a who that, give me a who that, and I'll give you one back, baby. Who that to you? Big ups to you, and big ups to my my uh, uh uh my my girl out there. Big ups to all the ladies in the building. Big ups to Foxy. I see you out there. Big ups to Foxy watching. Big ups to you, baby. Dewine Mead, who that to you, and all the family members. Much love to all y'all. Big ups to the great Saint Think Tank. We in the building. Now on this edition, I like to welcome everybody. What's up, Blake? Who that to you, Blake? Tro Blue it. Who that to you? I ain't leaving nobody out. Like I say, roll call to the great black and gold family members. Without you, this is not possible. Big ups to you. Kyle Davis. What up, Kyle? Who that to you? Jarvis Rogers. Who that to you? Big ups to the fam. What's happening? So like I said, family, on this installment of the show, please hit the like button. And we got some news to go over with you on this one. Big ups to you. Uh, let's see, the Danny Delphia. What's up, Danny? How you doing, fam? Big ups to you. He said, what's good, my brother? Huge Saints fans, but he says, Ben, your show, good content. You keep up the good work. Real, not sugarcoating. Keep up the good job. Thank you, Danny. The Danny Delphina. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate you for that. Much love to you, and thank you for your support. Uh, Jasper Bowden, who that to you? Good to see you in the chat as well. So like I said, family, much love to all y'all. We're going to do this big on the show today. Gundam. What's up, Gundam? I see you, fam. Who that tell you? Now, uh, on this, we're going to go over. We, we opened the show with Drew Brees there and uh, and John Thompson. Who that tell you, fam? And, and, and that's what we're going to talk about. We, we we had Drew to open up the show. I played an extended, about uh, six or seven minutes of a nine-minute interview that Drew did earlier today, basically talking about issues dealing with the Saints. We have several news items I want to go over with you, the summation. Then we're going to go into uh, and that and a few little things I wanted to share with you guys, the light and the move. Y'all guys know I'm a part comedian as well. So I always wanted to share the move with the family members. And on the Wednesday, a hump day to make you smile a bit to get you a laugh and entertain you for the next three hours. That's right. Three hours, baby, we're going to be in the building. The first hour, we're going to cover the news and notes. We're going to go into commercial break, come back for two straight hours of non-stop talking to you on the phone so get ready for your questions concerns comments put them in the chat uh, and, and let me know what you guys are thinking and how you're feeling about this here thing so uh like i said this is several interesting things that is developing we're gonna go over that but before we get into that family i want to share a little uh, uh one of the things we, we kind of joked the, about uh the cornerbacks for the saints not named laddy daddy jack rabbit jenkins and Chauncey Gardner Johnson, we we kind of uh, made fun of him and called him the Barbershop Quartet. If y'all remember that, put one in the chat. Tramal, what's up, man? Big up to you, bro. Now nah, y'all are man, y'all are lady, y'all are people, y'all are man, y'all are woman, y'all are people, man. Without y'all, it's, I'm nothing here, man. Big ups to you. But family, it's how many people remember that? A bit me joking. I made fun of the Saints secondary members be under, you know, not Laddy Daddy. You know, Laddy Daddy passes through the show all the time. Not the Jack Rabbit, or not the uh, uh, or them. Matter of fact, we did a, a a graphic representation. How many people seen that in the community post section? Yeah, did y'all see that? Did y'all see the barbershop quartet? Okay, brother Tramal seen it. He commented on it. All right, now listen, family. 
I got a I just got a surprise for y'all before we get into the to the Saints news and notes that the go. Oh, thank you, Chill Blake. Now this, this this is the thing. The barbershop quartet, who that nation, who that to y'all see you, fam. The barbershop quartet, I was able to get a hold of them, and they're making an appearance tonight. And they're doing it tonight. And they're going to start the broadcast off. And I just wanted to let y'all know that we're going to, that the Barbershop Quartet, the, it's their, the name of those con, those cornerbacks, it's called the Dollar Tree Quartet. It's the Dollar Tree Quartet. And, uh, and, and, and of course, Dennis Allen and Aaron Glenn are with them. But they're going to make an appearance tonight. And not only that, but they will also perform. That's right. For the first and only time, the Barbershop Quartet will perform tonight on the show. Tonight, baby. That's right. I got them, man. I got them, and they coming on. They was gracious enough to say we coming on, and we're going to perform for the family members tonight. So if y'all give me just a second, we're going to set up the Barbershop Quartet so the family members, they can uh, uh, get into it. They can drop one of their new hits, and they're going to sing one of the new hits by the Barbershop Quartet called Somebody to Love because – Obviously, they feel like Big Q and the sports comb ain't giving them no love. The barber, that's right, the Dollar Tree Quartet said that we are not giving them any love. So they have a new song they're going to be performing called Somebody to Love. And I'm gonna, we go, they're going to perform just a small piece of it. But like the, old, like the man said some time ago, they'd like to hear it go. So y'all just give me just a second. And we about to put on the barber shop. The Dollar Tree Quartet live on the show. Here we go. Die a little, can barely stand on my feet. Take a look, take a look, look in the mirror and cry, Lord, what you doing to me? I have spent all my years in believing you, but I just can't get no relief, Lord. Somebody, somebody, oh, somebody, can anybody find me? Somebody to love. Look at, look at Patrick love. Robinson hitting them deep notes. Every day of my life, I work till I ache in my bones. At the end of the day, I take home my heart and bear all of my own. I get down on my knees and I start to pray till the tears run down from my eyes. Lord, somebody, somebody, oh, somebody, can anybody find me? Somebody to love. All I need is somebody to love. Oh, every day, every day I tried and I tried and I tried. But no, BJ. Everybody wanna put me down. They say I'm going crazy. They say I got a lot of water in my brain. I got no common sense and no one left. That is true. That's no common sense, oh, y'all guys. Oh, 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 somebody, 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 can anybody find me? Somebody to love. Find me somebody. Find me somebody to love. Oh, BJ. Got no feel, got no rhythm. I just keep losing my feet. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm alright. All right. How about that, man? How about that, family? How about that? Let's give them a hand, man. How about that? The one and only lifetime appearance of the Dollar Tree Quartet. How about that? <laughs> oh, you heard PJ bust that solo? Boy, man, y'all didn't know, did y'all? Y'all did not know, did y'all? Let's give them a hand, man. Let's give them guys a hand. Give them a hand. The Dollar Tree Quartet, y'all. Let's give them a hand now. 
Give him a hand, family. Come on, man. The Dollar Tree Quartet. That's what I'm talking about, man. Beautiful. Fantastic, man. That was beautiful. Love it. Love it. The Dollar Tree Quartet, man. Big ups to it. And last minute, family. They said, Q, we won't get on there. We won't talk to the family members. We want to let them know that we're not feeling the love. So we're going to sing this song called Somebody to Love. And you heard, he said they make mistakes and they fall down, but they're looking for somebody to love them through all their mistakes. Baby, let me tell you something right there. Let me tell you something right there, baby. Let me tell you something right there. Let me tell you something. I said, listen, I said, you know what, fellas? I've been quite critical of you. You're right. So we're going to let the great same thing take here. Somebody to love. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, y'all know I'm part comedian, man. Y'all know how it go. I love making the family members happy, man. I thought y'all would enjoy the hell out of that. I know I did. <laughs> hell, they ain't good for nothing else. <laughs> hell, they can't cover a bed. They might as well make you smile and laugh. I mean, come on now. Big ups to the family members in the live stream. Much love to you and yearns on this edition. Big ups to the family members. Eternal absolute. Big ups. <laughs> Man, did you see them jackets? Man, they was looking pretty slither right there. They was looking pretty slither right there. Big ups to the fam, the smokeless YT, the rest of the fam. <laughs> Die Hard Saints fam, what's up fam? <laughs> he said, yo Q, you big funny. <laughs> you funny. Demetrius Simpson, what's up Demetrius? He says, Q, you wild, man. <laughs> oh. Man, you know how it is, family. I, you know, I, I got I to gotta show the, the family members some love. The Barbershop Quartet family. They can't cover cornerbacks. They can't cover tight ends or even running backs, but they can sing their ass off. They, they got to be good for something, you know? Hell, shit. Anyway, big ups to the family members on this one. We're going to jump right into it. Kenny Sutton, who that to you? Good to see you in the chat. Inevitable. What's up, fam? Good to see you in the chat as well. Big ups to the family members. I'm glad y'all enjoy it. Somebody to love. Listen, here. Mm. That's how it's supposed to be, fam. Everybody got to find somebody to love. There you go. All right, so we're going to start it off, fam. We're going to get into it. We already brung it in with Drew Brees. Thank, thank you once again. Uh, and and uh, a last-minute bow there to the, ball, to the Dollar Tree Quartet. Thank you, Dollar Tree Quartet, for y'all great solo that was absolutely wonderful they taking their last bow thank you fellas appreciate you thank you for that thank you barbershop uh, the dollar tree barbershop quartet thank you for that all right next thing we're gonna do family we're gonna move on into the, the injury report we're gonna get into today's injury report so give me a we'll share the screen screen get into it on today's injury report as of Wednesday, Week Nine's injury report before the big game with the Saints, with the Saints going against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, got Justin Hardy who was just on there. Of course, you know he did not play because he was performing here, so he can't be at two places at once. You see, Justin Hardy just performed here, so of course he couldn't be at practice. Sheldon Rankins uh, is dealing with a knee issue as well. He did not practice as well. Drew Brees is on that thing. How about that with a sh right shoulder? issue a shoulder right shoulder issue he was limited hmm also elvin kamara with a foot issue that we actually seen that he actually got up in with a mini hobble and he says uh he did say in the interview it's like uh stubbing your toe on the table or something like that so he's limited as well marquez calloway limited with that ankle mike is also limited with ankle and hamstring issues and nick easton is out of that concussion protocol and good to go. So DJ Philco, what's up there, fam? Good to see you. DJ Philco 79. Who that to you? Jared Slack, who that to you as well? Big ups to you and Yearns on this edition. Now looking at it, man, some very interesting names. Vadi Vadi interesting. These are some interesting names. These two right here. Because these two names is why the Saints are winning games. Elvin Kamara with a light foot issue that they saying is nothing. Drew is on there. Remember the last time Drew been on there? What's up, Crass? Who that to you, my brother? Good to see you in the chat, bro. Appreciate you being here. And Drew with a right shoulder issue. Anything pertaining to the shoulders, we do not need. You know what I'm saying, family? But it was limited. We'll just have to monitor and see what's going on. And, of course, Elvin Kamara. Man, we don't need that against the Suckaneers. And speaking of the Tampa Bay Suckaneers, 
Here's their injury report. You got uh, William Golston, who's on a reserve C-19 list. He's not active. Uh, cornerback Jill, Jamil Dean, illness, did not practice. Ali Marpet had, is in the concussion protocol. He did not practice. Wide receiver Chris Goodman, who had his fingers in the cast, was, the cast was limited. Scotty Miller, who's become the third option uh, out there, is limited as well with hip and groin issues. Jason Pierre-Paul, a PPP as we like to call him, JPP as we like to call him, with knee issues, he's limited. Mike Epp was the safety, has groin issues, he's limited. And a very good young safety and Antoine Winfield, the son of a uh, Viking great Antoine Winfield, has shoulder issues, but he fully practiced. And he's been a big part of the resurgence of the defense, being he's covering the back end. Very smart play. I wish we would have drafted him. I really do. So, as you can see, some real interesting names on this injury list. The Drew Brees with the shoulder is limited. Kamara with the foot is limited. And, of course, Callaway, Thomas, and everybody else. Hopefully, man, listen, bro. We did hear what Drew said about it. They're not really thinking too much about it. But in the end, anytime you see your 41-year-old ass quarterback on there with a right shoulder issue, because, you know, whether he took it or not, you got people running around here. He throwing the goddamn ball 41 times a game. And then it's no matter why we thinking that he have a shoulder issues. <laughs> I mean, he's right-handed, and this right shoulder is the shoulder he uses to push the ball down the field. <laughs> he got a right shoulder problem. He wearing it out. Come on, Peyton, run the ball. You can't throw the ball 41 goddamn times a game is what I was saying. But we got people saying, Q, I don't care about that. We winning games. And I keep telling you, it comes at a price, especially if you don't do it the correct way. Like in the great words of the immortal, very whining God, the whining R&B God known as Keith Sweat, there's a right and a wrong way to love somebody. Now, if y'all remember that, put that one in the chat. You know, that was one of my favorite old school songs by Keith Sweat. Put one in the chat if you're a fan of that song. There's a right and a wrong way to love somebody. But it's not about the loving somebody aspect. I'm just quoting the fact that there's a right and wrong way. The wrong way is to get the wins at the behest of a 41-year-old ass quarterback throwing the ball down the field 41 times a game. That's the issue I have with this whole situation. That's why I kept saying run the ball because you cannot sustain winning at that level. And then the same people who are then celebrating this at the fact that they're throwing the ball too much on a 41-year-old quarterback, when he starts to teeter and tank, they're going to start to say get rid of. <laughs> I'll be good grief, man. Now I'm sitting here telling you, well, Q, what you mean? What you like, Swade? That's Swade's favorite. What you mean? Nah, Swade, you know what I mean. That's just your way of trying to deny the evidence. The proof is in the pudding. The proof is in the pudding. You can't throw the ball 41 times a game with a 41 year old quarterback. You don't need to do that, especially when you have guys on your team that average over four yards a carry. Lean on a running attack. I thought that's why you have four active running backs on your roster, which you're not using. We have to be smarter in our usage of our players if it's going to be a long or deep playoff run. We have to be smarter. That's all I've been saying. All right, family, let's move into the next article right here, and it's involved our guy Emmanuel Sanders back at practice, which is good news after missing the last couple of games due to the C-Virus situation, right? Saints wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders back at practice signaling the veteran is officially off the C-19 list. He was officially on the list 12 days after testing positive with symptoms. Of the C-Virus, Thursday, October the 22nd, he missed two games, including a game against the Panthers, a game against the Bears due to the illness. He said he had a fever of 102 degrees, felt nauseous and loopy. In addition to having body aches before coming down with the symptoms, he said he felt off at practice. I imagine so. He said, I was running, I, I was exhausted, I was, but I was exhausting so much energy into running, it felt abnormal. He says, I didn't feel like myself. Sanders was the fifth player to land on the C-19 list the beginning of the training camp and the sixth player to initially test positive for the virus. Cade Nellis, Zach Wood, Deontay Harris returned for false positive results during training camp and spent minimal time on the C-19 list. The fullback Burton returned as a false positive ahead of Saints Week 4 matchup against Detroit, but did not need to go on the list due to undated protocol, the updated protocols. The other true positive testimony Saints this season was running back and special teams player Dwayne Washington, who tested positive back in August and 30th. He spent 18 days away from the team while on the list and was finally reinstated. Oh, yeah, you remember that guy. 
He's the guy that averages five yards a rush for you when you give him the ball. He's also the third running back or fourth running back on the team. It's amazing. All right, let's move on. And this is, of course, dealing with uh, J- Javon Williams explains why he sucker punched Chauncey Gardner-Johnson and lost. Some people say, Q, he spit on him. I didn't see him spit on him. I'm looking at the visual evidence. I did not see Chauncey Gardner-Johnson spit on the man. But Chauncey Gardner-Johnson full of shit, though, because he had no business ripping off the Ledoux uh, mouthpiece and throwing it on the ground. You didn't have to do that. Then he was caught shoving his finger in the face of another Bears wide receiver. He got away with that. This dude here, man, we got to ring this dude in. I'm just I'm just keeping it real with you. And people are like, yeah, Q, I like it. He got that fire. Let me tell you, that fire, you get your ass burnt. Especially in these games where you don't need uneduc- you know, unintelligent or undisciplined plays like that have to be checked right now before they escalate. Because I'm seeing a trending, troublesome trending record of behaviors from Chauncey Gardner Johnson. Of course, he got into the debate, you know, the discuss the, the tussle with Mike Thomas, but he was the one that initiated that with shit talking. He started calling him slant boy and then ultimately he started dissing his uncle. And that's when that's when the blows came when he got personal with the man family. You know, he did that, they worked that out. Now he's doing this little stuff. He got, you know, he got towed to up two weeks ago in the game where the guy was tearing him up. Anybody was tearing him up two weeks ago. He he got into a tussle with that guy, knocked him, you know, pushed Robbie Anderson out at uh, uh out of bounds, got a 15 yard penalty. Now in this game, he's shoving the fingers and people's ripping their stuff off and all this kind of nonsense. Then stand up there talking about the innocent. They better check this little dude because he a second year player. He feeling himself. You gotta ring this dude in for these behaviors come detrimental in terms of penalties. That's gonna hurt the team. We got it. We can't be we can't be undisciplined. I'm a fan of fire. I'm passionate. I enjoy passion. But it has to be smart. You can't jeopardize and hurt the team with stupid ass uh, play like this unintelligent play. And he was fortunate that the referees didn't see him stick fingers in their face because, listen, the referees are looking to penalize the Saints anyway. We don't need players giving them a reason to. Wims defended his actions against Gardner Johnson, saying the Saints defensive back spit on him and ripped out his mouthpiece, which led to two punches to Garmin. Now, listen. I didn't see. I, I did not see it. I watched that whole play. I played this this the play. When was that family? On Monday. We sat there and played the entire tape when they got up and was talking. There was no spitting in his face that I seen, but they come to blows. But I did see Chauncey Gardner rip off his mouthpiece. He didn't notice it at the time. He didn't realize he ranked because he his body motions is Chauncey did it and ripped it off. He didn't notice it. Then Chauncey threw it on the field. Then when the, as the tape played, you can see the offensive lineman seeing it and throwing it back and all this kind of stuff. But ultimately, the guy waited several minutes before he got a chance to get back on the field and get at Chauncey Gardner Johnson. He wasn't even being guarded by Chauncey. He was being guarded by uh, Jack Rabbit. But that's when he came. This when this play came after all that occurred, uh, and he also threw, came to blows. And you can see Jack Rabbit jumps on his back. But this was all after the fact. Now, Williams, uh, he says, he says the defensive back spit on him, ripped out his mouthpiece, which led to two punches from Gardner's helmet. Johnson not only has a history of not only has a history of incidents on the field, but with his own teammates, as he was the player, the Saints wide receiver Mike Thomas punched in practice last month. Thomas was suspended for a game for that. Williams tapped Gardner Johnson after a play and punched him in the helmet as Gardner Johnson waited for a penalty to be thrown. Williams punched Gardner Johnson again before the players got involved in the scrum. Jenkins came to Johnson, A, by jumping on Williams and wrestling to his back, on his back to the ground. Johnson didn't appear to throw any punches back at as a few. The Saints teammates rallied to his defense. He said, I didn't see it. I told him Mr. Bears Nagy said he's full of it. He was watching that. You didn't see that. One of J- uh, J- Javon's strengths is his character, who he is as a person. He since apologized, but that's not you. But he said, that's not blank you don't have that there's no part of that in the game again i still haven't seen it but from what i've heard it's not good that's not how we roll the 15 yard penalty led to folks interception the very next play which upset Nagy as the offense stalled in the quarter they were imploding anyway when stuff like that started to happen but that's their take on it as well but listen i watched the tape i didn't see no spitting but chauncey Gardner johnson got to cut this out right now we got to get him under control all right let's move on to the next article we have here, which is Saints wide receiver Tommy Lee Lewis 
as we were saying, Tommy Lee Lewis is re-signed to the team and along with Ethan Wolf to, to the practice squad. So you have Saints re-signed Tommy Lee Lewis and Ethan Wolf back to the practice squad. So let's go into that. Saints made a host of roster moves on Wednesday, re-signing Tommy Lee uh, Lewis and tight end Ethan Wolf to practice squad. The Saints had to sign Wolf because they placed practice squad defensive end Marcus Willoughby on the practice squad's version of the injury reserve. It's amazing how Willoughby got hurt and he don't even play. Lewis had been on the Saints practice squad since October the 8th, but the team has since signed a 53-man roster ahead of last week's game against the Bears due to availability issues with at the half of the positions group. The only receivers on the 53-man roster that weren't available for Sunday's game were that were available for Sunday's game, excuse me, was Trey Klein, Deontay, because of Mike Thomas and Callaway were out with injuries, and Fowler had been placed on the IR the week before. The Saints then waived Lewis from the active roster on Monday. He cleared the waivers on Tuesday, a sign that the receiver Sanders would be activated from the C-19 list. Sanders was placed back on the active roster Wednesday and was at present at practice, as we just covered earlier. Wolf was with the, with the Saints during the training camp, first signing with the team on August the 18th. The day after the tra- uh, team started padding practice, Wolf stayed with the Saints throughout the rest of the camp, but didn't make it through roster cuts. Willoughby was first signed to the Saints way back on September the 8th. After they didn't get the Jadavion Clowney, the next move was they signed that kid's Willoughby, which I'm amazed that he's hurt because he don't play. <laughs> Would he tripped on something? I mean, seriously. And, of course, our final uh, situation, Elvin Kamara misses the Saints practice with a foot injury. Of course, this was on the practice squad, and it was, of course, tweeted by Underhill that Kamara's just staying off of it right now. Letting it rest, things can change. But am I? To- but I am told that it would be a surprise if this impacts his game status. This is Underhill saying that. All right. So at first, the bad news is when the Saints uh, took the practice field uh, on Wednesday, there were without the best player, superstar running back Elvin Kamara was not seen participating during a portion of work open to media. And now the good news is Underhill reports that Kamara is managing a minor bone bruise in his foot, described as nothing too serious according to Mike Triplett's report. That suggests there won't be an extended absence for Kamara, and that it's too soon to put his availability for Sunday's matchup with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in doubt. Still keep an eye on the injury report as it is updated over the course of the week. Now, to update, Saints coach Sean Payton characterized the injury as day-to-day, according to what he told the, uh, the Athletic, explaining that the Saints want to play it safe with their keystone playmaker. It also would make sense to play it safe, Coach Payton. If you ran somebody else, you have three other running backs on this roster. Perhaps you need to lo- use lean on Latavius Murray a lot more than what you've been doing. Because Elvin Kamara has been doing a fantastic job. But there are other players that can impact the team that help Elvin and Drew Brees win games. Let some of this pressure fall on Latavius. Let some of this pressure fall on Dwayne Washington or Ty Montgomery. These are professionals. They get paid a lot of money to play. It is up to you to figure out a, a correct and efficient role for them to play. And this, this repetitive, ridiculous amount of nine usage of Latavius Murray is really troubling to me. It really is. Because you're using these guys too much early on, and we're overusing them because we're exposed at many levels because the play calling we're using is not it's not exactly getting us the results that we want. Like when you're beating teams by seven points to 10 points or something like that. Like we're accustomed to watching. The, as you can see, the, the, the canyon has, the gap has closed quite significantly. And they have picked up on a lot of the, of the Peyton's playbook. He does not recognize that. He must don't because he's cycling the same series of plays over and over again. And, and thinking that his competition not going to pick up on that. That's totally preposterous. I see it, so I know they see it. You know what I mean? But big ups to the Black and Gold family members. Let me recap all the stories as Elvin Kamara and Mr. Foot Injury will start it all by naming. We played Drew Brees. He opened up the broadcast with us today. We also went over the Saints injury report, which, as you can see, if for people or family members who come in at this juncture, we'll do a, quite a, a small synopsis and run back over it. A summary, if you will. Justin Hardy's on there, did not practice because he was on here singing. That's why he didn't. The people are like, where's Justin Hardy? You've seen him. He was on here singing on the sports coma. So there you go. 
Sheldon Rankins with his knee, he did not practice. If you've seen that play when Sheldon Rankins hurt his knee, man, that was an ugly play, man. And you would have think that a big guy like that wouldn't have been able to walk off there. I've seen that play, and it was ugly. Drew Brees has a right shoulder issue, you know, that we're talking about right here. And uh, Drew, and I'm just going to show you Drew's numbers right here because a lot of people don't understand. Look at, a, look at the old man's numbers. Now, 20 years, 41 years old, little Drew from Purdue. 13 touchdowns on the year for all you Drew haters. Three interceptions really is two because the guy batted it at the line of scrimmage. So he really, in my opinion, has two interceptions. 13 touchdowns this year for little Drew from Purdue. Look there, look at this. Almost 2,000 yards rushing at the halfway point of the season. If Drew keep doing this, he'll have over, he's he going to throw for about, he's going to throw about 4,200 yards this year. You know, if they know how to use, look at this rating here, 106.5 for all them Drew haters out there. Drew too old, but look at them numbers right there. Them numbers, let them numbers quiet them down a bit. Them Drew haters out there. All right, anyway, Drew Brees got the right shoulder issue. He was limited. Also, Elvin Kamara, we just covered that. Callaway is limited as well with that ankle. And then Michael Thomas, who hoping to see some action, was also limited. He's been limited since week two. Mike's ready to get on the field. And, of course, Nick Easton returns off the concussion protocol. He should be ready to go after a two-game a two break of action. We also covered Emmanuel Sanders returning back to practice after missing the last two games with the C-Virus. We also talked about Chauncey Vaughn Johnson's involvement with the Javon Wims fight and whatnot. We talked about that. And also we talked about Tommy Lee signing him and Ethan Wolf signing to the practice squad. And then, of course, we didn't cover Elton Kamara misses practice with a foot injury. And we went more in detail with that as well. So quite a good bit of news to cover today. So big ups to the family. As we do what we do. Big ups to the family members. Please, please hit upon the like button. If you're in the chat, pl chat, please spike, speak up, speak. What the hell I'm trying to say? <laughs> please hit upon it. Spank it is what I'm saying. Hit, hit the hell out the like button. <laughs> I was trying to find the right, the right word to say. Hit the like button. Spank the like button. Bash the like button. Do that for me. All right. I'm going to go to the chat family in about 10 minutes. We're going to go into our first break. And when I come back, I'm going to open up the phone lines. So the family members can chime in as well. And then we're going to go two hours without commercial. We ran our commercial break at the start of the show. We're about to get the second one out of the way. And then uh, after that, we'll have two straight hours of, 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 of phone conversation with the great St. Thank Tank. That'll end uh, just after 830. Okay. And then after that, we got a ring king boxing tonight as we will preview the Devin Haney fight. As Devin Haney takes on Yuri Gamboa. For my boxing people out there, you know, Big Q love boxing, man. So the Ring Kings boxing is tonight with my co-host, former boxing professional, Eddie Too Mean Johnson. What's up, Too Mean? So that'll be on Ring Kings boxing. If you're a boxing fan, hit go in the description section below and sign up for Ring Kings boxing and subscribe. The link is down there along with the Pelican link. If you're a Pelican fan, Pelican's down there and the LSU Tough Tiger Talk is down there. Join the rest of the shows. All right, we're going to go into the chat right here for the next 10 minutes. Then we're going to go into break. And then after we come out with the break, then we're going to go back, like I said. Uh, Blake says, uh, let Kamara throw more. Let him throw more. <laughs> he can't throw the ball. I, I mean, he, he got a pretty pretty good arm, man. You need to let him throw that. But I ain't mad at you because that'll be a cold package. Like, say, for instance, you do a tall sweep out there to Kamara. He runs out there. They chase him, Right. And while he while they chasing him like he gonna do something, the receiver takes off and just just flat line right down the field, and Kamara lunches the ball right to him. Imagination, Peyton. Imagination. Come on. Thank you for that, Blake. Dave says, uh, please put two safeties over the top. <laughs> yeah, that that's the truth, bro. And also, we talk about you know Kawhi Alexander is not gonna play against the Bucks. That's also another article that I wanted to share with you guys. But, of course, the Saints acquired Kawhi and Alexander. We did several shows on him. We talked about his production and what he, what he mean. Uh, it means trouble for Alex Anzalone, even though uh, they're saying that he might not be available, that he won't be available for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers matchup coming up on Sunday, but probably after that. So the reality is his contract, $54 million, he signed in 2019. The Saints have three more years on that contract. This year is five, just over a half a million dollars according to Sport Track, And the next two years after that is over $12 million a season. 
So the Saints, of course, they're going to rework his deal. But when you commit to a, a linebacker like that, that's hasta la vista for Alex Anzalone. So we get rid of, we get a, a Alex, we get we get an Alex and we get rid of an Alex. So we get Quan Alexander and get rid of Alexander Anzalone. You get me? So we get an Alex to get rid of an Alex. So I think even though they didn't trade him, he'll still remain on the team. But you know, you're not going to pay Quan Alexander all that money for him to be sitting as a backup to him. I think he'll get some some reps and get learning reps so he can eventually take over that position. All right, let's keep going. Thank you, Dave. Dave says, put two safeties over the top. I was breaking down Quan because Dave's uh, comment brings into mind why the Saints went and got him. He was exclusively given a uh, win and, and, and sought out because of his athletic ability to cover the tight ends. He basically has safety speed. He's a poor man version. When I watch him play, he reminds me of Thomas Davis. If y'all remember Thomas Davis, the longtime linebacker for the Carolina Panthers, who had a lot of success. He was a safety out of the University of Georgia, a pretty good one in college out of the SEC. And he converted him to a linebacker when he came, when he came to Carolina's defense. And he was playing opposite of Luke Keekley. But Thomas Davis was a, a hell of a player for many years for Carolina. And I look at his game and when you when I want to make comparisons of what kind of player Quan Alexander is, he puts me in the mind of a poor man's Thomas Davis. And I only say poor man because he doesn't have the longevity uh, that a Thomas Davis has. But can that change? Of course, that can change. Like we had John DeVilman, who was quite had quite the injury history with the Jets before the Saints acquired him. Then all of a sudden he healed up and we never had that issue. Well, you know, during that stretch of really successful football, he was playing en route to a Super Bowl title. So that's what his game, Quan Alexander's game, reminds me of. And that he has the ability to cover the tight end. And he can cover some running backs out of the backfield as well. Very talented player. And that will allow the safeties to play back where they're supposed to play. And we don't have to use Malcolm Jenkins down there anymore, which will help Marcus Williams out big time because Jenkins could tell him, you kind of instruct him why he's back there instead of leaving him as a single high safety. And the poor kid just don't know what he's doing. He, you know, he's not good at like a DC astutely mentioned play recognition and things of that sort. That was well said by DC because that is hundred percent true. That play recognition is a main component of why Marcus Williams is, is not getting it. And in his third year, like we covered on TSC Q and a yesterday, we had a very lively show DC and black suede joined us and GM Kev and nine, eight, five live and the rest of those guys. We appreciate everybody for joining us last night on our Patreon show. If you want, if you're interested in joining that, go to patreon.com forward slash the PRO Media Network link in the ch in the description section. But we covered uh, the number production of a guy like Marcus Williams and how it's going like this from 75, whatever it was, 75 tackles in the rookie year, his tackles is going down like this, which means I don't know if he's learning what he needs to learn. Perhaps he can get it from a coach on the field like Malcolm Jenkins by changing. So when Quine gets there, that'll help out. Larry, thank you, Larry, for subscribing. Big ups to Larry F. Dickerson. Big ups, fam. Thank you. And uh, uh, we know Larry been here for a while. Thank you, Larry. But that's the great thing, man, about this whole mixture is that I do applaud the move. It's a really good move. It solves a major problem. That was a big problem. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. That was a huge freaking problem. But they took care of it. And I applaud the general for them for not having a delusionment to be able to take care of what needs to be done. So we appreciate that. All right, let's keep on going down here. Thanks for that, Dave. Uh, let's see. Crash says, Saints can absolutely run the ball between the tackles on Tampa. I agree. So, bro, I think we are a lot better than people are giving us credit for because they're looking at the stagnation of our offense because we're not producing the type of numbers that we're accustomed to look. So they're saying this team is not very good. On TSC q and I played the lady saying that this team is 5-2, and two, but they're not very good. And because what they're comparing it to is the Saints of yesteryear when the Saints just fling the ball over the field like Kansas City's doing right now. You know, Drew Brees throwing for four and five in, uh, touchdowns, full 400, 450 yards and all that kind of stuff. Listen, don't get me wrong. We'll have one or two of those games. But what you can really help yourself is if you can run the ball, that'll force the safeties to come down there and then you throw it off top of the head. And like we talked about against the, the Bears, it was like, Q, they couldn't run the ball. Why? Because it was five on five. Okay, tell me why they couldn't run the ball. Because it was five on five. Okay, so you mean to tell me we got five offensive linemen. They have four defensive linemen. 
they added a linebacker more than likely to the mix. So you mean to tell me our five offensive linemen against their four defensive linemen and one linebacker, and you can't win that, ba that battle? If it's five on five, you still win. Do you get what I'm saying? Because they still, if you five on five, your five is the best five. It, it, put one in the chat if you believe the Saints offensive lineman, offensive line as a collective is a top five unit, even with Ruiz there. Put one in the chat if you believe they're a, a top five unit. Put one in the chat if you believe they're a top 10 unit. Regardless of their five or 10, their, our five beats their five every time. So don't, don't tell me nothing about their five on five. You ain't say seven on five. Or oh, six on five, five on five, we still win. Who going to stop Latavius Murray with a fullback back there and he coming through there? You tell me which one of them going to get off so they can get on Latavius Murray. By the time they touch Latavius Murray, he going to be four, five yards into past the line of scrimmage in a positive way. So like I'm saying, it's no excuses for not running the ball. We ran it 30 times, Q. What more you want? I want 40 goddamn times. I want you to run it as many times as you threw it against the Chicago Bears when you said you was going to run it because of the 30 mile per hour wins and all that. Why? Q, we still won. That's not the point. We have to refine our running game right now so we know how to use it in the playoffs because, listen, it is not your air attack that's going to take you deep into the playoffs. Can, can we understand that? You know, put why in the chat. Put why in the chat if we understand that it is not the passing attack that will give us a deep play and run playoff run. It's the running attack because the running attack put one in the chat. If you believe that, if you don't put in, in the chat, say, no, I don't believe that Q, but I'm telling you what it is. The running attack is what's going to put you deep in the playoff race. It is the method into the madness that will take you. And off the back of the running attack, you can throw the ball because the safeties will have to come down and cover. They have to commit resources to stopping the run. And when they do that, then you got all that open back up there and you can throw it as much as you want. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, Q, you ain't happy? And Sway said, well, Q, you ain't happy with that? You ain't happy with that, Q? And I said, listen, bro, listen. All right, listen. No, I'm, ha I'm happy for the wins. I keep have to telling people that. But it's almost like you got a crystal ball. And I'm not saying I got a crystal ball, but I'm saying I might as well say I got a crystal ball because I done seen this movie Three times, uh, 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 what, uh, three years in a row I've seen this movie. So it's like knowing you've seen the movie, three years worth of the movie, you've seen it, and nobody ain't seen the movie. You the only one seen the movie, and then you tell the people, you know, that ask you what you think. Well, listen, bro, we've been here, we've been here before three years straight, and we're doing the same similar stuff because the coach ain't learning from the, his mistakes. He had changed the team up to a degree. But you still got to learn the mistakes. You still got to run the ball. Running the ball, it will answer the problems. You, you have to run the ball. Look what Tennessee did. Tennessee used the running attack to, to, to get to the, to the AFC Championship game. They used the running attack. You have a similar bat. He's not exactly the same as Derrick Henry. But Latavius Murray is a similar back. He's not as good as Henry. But he can. if you give him the ball 12, 15 times a game, he gets stronger as the game goes on. And I don't understand why you're not utilizing that more. You can't say that he don't know the book because he does. He getting less than 10 carries a game. We don't need him to catch. We Kamara is catching eight, nine passes a game. He's running the ball 10 and 12 times a game. You're wearing him out just like you're wearing Drew out. And then these guys going to start teetering a bit. Who got their back? You ain't playing the guys. You're not, it's not, you we winning, but it's at a cost. I'm telling you, I'm telling you something here. We winning, but it's coming at a cost. And let, I'm going to tell you, are you willing to pay that cost? Because you're going to throw 41 times a game. He got shoulder problems on the eye, he, on the injury list. I just showed it to you with <laughs> right shoulder. Right shoulder is his throwing shoulder. We're throwing the ball too much, man. We're throwing it too much. We got to run the ball. We got to run the ball more than what we're throwing the ball. Because the teams that you're playing are not that good at stopping the run. And then you can throw the ball and stop with the Taysom package. It only worked against the Bears because the Bears are dreadful. They can't stop the run. They shitty. That's right. I said it to all you Bears people out there. All right. Big ups to the family members, man. Like people like you, you ain't happy for the win. Yeah, I'm happy for the win. But I'm sitting up here looking in the crystal ball saying, family, listen, I've seen three years of this falling through the flow type stuff. 
and we we barely it's it's very problematic that we know I know how good this offense is I really do and what they can do and this is not it we win and barely beating teams by three points and I'm happy for the wins but put one in the chat if you think they beat the Kansas City Chiefs if they play them Sunday put one in the chat if you think they beat the Seattle Seahawks playing like this next I, any of the top teams do they beat Baltimore the Ravens if they go up against them playing like this you put one in the chat and tell me that I'm just telling you it's that real. It's that real football talk. I'm telling you. I don't get happy. I, I mean, I'm happy for the win, don't get me wrong, but we, I still approach, approach it like a coach. I see the stuff with Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. I see that you need to get that under control right now, player, because that could be problematic. He got lucky so far with the hand, and that could have been 15 yards right there on you in that in that kind of game, you know? you could That could have been on you too, you see? Him ripping this thing down, that could have been a charge. They're looking to hit you with charges. They pull touchdown passes. They pull touchdowns off the board and fumbles from you all the time. And you got a stupid player running around there making dumbass moves like that. And the referee's looking, referee's looking to call you. Looking to call. They're all around this stuff with them big ass, them big old safari goggles and shit. Like they're looking at lions and shit. They're over there looking. Man, are we gonna find we gonna find the Saints. We gonna we gonna find the Saints. We gonna get them. And then you got dumbass Chauncey going to ripping the guy thing and putting his hand all in the guy face. Man, come on, man. That's stupid, man. We can't do that. We got to get that under control ASAP. Anyway, big ups to the rest of the family. Saints booming and the rest of the family. I will see y'all in the chat. Big ups to you, man. Big ups to you. We in the building, man. Now we're gonna go. Like I said, family. Big ups to you. Can't guard juice. What's up, fam? Big ups to you. Good to see you in the chat as well. Uh, Iceman in the building as well. Good to see you, Iceman. What's up with you? Arnold Landry. Todd uh, Redu. What's up, Todd? Lee Wood. Garrett Carraway. Kai the Great. And all the family members, thank y'all for joining us. Tragic 504. Slick Rick. What's happening, fam? I see you there. Big ups to you. I know I ain't catch y'all was doing the reports. But I see you. Ramsey. Who that to you, Ramsey? I see you as well, fam. Uh, Louie. What's up, Louie? Louis Lombard representing the Cali chapter, the Who That Nation. Great Saint Think Tank in the building. Don, what's up, Don? Who that to you? Good to see you in the chat, fam. Jarrell Bledsoe, what's up, fam? Hold them hook TV. What's up, Mike? What's going on over there, brother? How you doing up there? Big ups to you. And all the great black and gold family members chiming in. Please hit the like buttons, family. And I tell you what, we're going to go to our break. When we come back, I'm going to open up the phone lines. I won't hear from you. I won't hear from you, baby. That's right, baby. I want to hear from you, baby. When we come back from the other side of the break, baby, we're going to talk some more saints, baby. We're going to talk about it, baby. Let me tell you something. We're going to talk. We're going to talk about it, baby. We're going to talk about it real good now, baby. Let me tell you something. We're going to talk. Because, baby, let me tell you something, baby. Who that? Who that? Toon Lee. Who that, baby? I see you, Toon Lee. Toon Lee, baby. Who that to you, baby? I see you, baby. I see you, baby. Who that to you? I see you, baby. Big ups to you, Josh. Go 23, baby. Listen, when we come back, baby, we're going to go on the break, baby. But I promise you, baby, when we come back on the other side of the break, we're going to open up the phone lines, baby. We're going to talk about it, baby. Let me tell you something, baby. God is a Saints fan, baby. Let me tell you something, bottom line, baby. He ain't no Raiders fan, baby. He ain't no Seahawk fan, baby. He ain't no Buccaneer, baby. That's wrong, baby. That Buccaneer, that's a pirate, baby. They stealing stuff, baby. Saints don't steal, baby. You understand what I'm saying, baby? You don't get stuff, good stuff from stealing, baby. Let me tell you something, baby. Let me tell you something. God's a Saints fan, baby. He ain't an Eagles fan, baby. He ain't a Cowboys fan, baby. He ain't a Chief fan, baby. He ain't a Washington Whataburger fan, baby. He ain't none of that. He ain't no Giants fan, baby. And to be honest with you, baby, he don't really favor the Giants, baby. He more with the with the smaller people, baby. He rock with them, baby. That's why he a Saints fan, baby. Let me tell you something. We'll be back on the other side of the break, baby. When we get done, baby, we're going to open up the phone line. So I'll see you later, baby. Who that? Remington Tax Solutions is a company that, together with their partners, provide virtual tax consultation and preparation for individuals, small business, and nonprofit. They also provide notary and a host of other business-related services for their clients. Their associates provide a systematic yet very client-centered approach to their services. They offer the industry knowledge and insight to help solve your most common complex tax issues. At Remington, their currency is time. The one resource that can... 
Bistro.com. Freshly prepared, home delivered, restaurant quality gourmet meals delivered straight to your home. Choose from over 50 plus gourmet meal options cooked by world class chefs and delivered frozen, ready to eat within minutes and no commit. Welcome to the one shop gourmet food delivery, specialized affordable options to eat right and feel great. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Every ingredient is hand picked to the highest standard. And why you should buy from HomeBistro.com? Restaurant quality made with natural ingredients delivered right to your door. Overnight shopping is available. Diabetic, paleo, heart health, and vegetarian options to eat during business since 1999. Courteous, knowledgeable, and professional support. Complete PCI compliant SSL security ordering and great meals. Choose from some of my favorite dishes. The Mediterranean chicken with orange honey sauce. The charbroiled chicken romesco. Or the grilled chicken breast with sweet and spicy vegetables. No matter what you choose, you can't lose with HomeBistro.com. Eat great, feel good, and save some money with HomeBistro.com. Hit the link in the description section below for more information. Located in Henderson, Nevada, BulkSupplements.com supplies over 400 pure nutritional supplements, ingredients to hundreds of thousands of consumers and manufacturers. All of their products are available from grams to metric tons through their online store at BulkSupplements.com. Orders received for noon Pacific Standard Time shipped the same day. Their FDA registered CGMP manufacturing and distributing facility has a staff over 60 full-time employees that take pride in providing excellent customer service and producing quality products for their customers. The wellness of the community is of the utmost importance to bulk supplements. It's dedicated to maintaining all health code and government regulation. Each supplement is tested in their in-house laboratory before distribution, ensuring that all products are safe for consumption. For any additional testing, they utilize reputable and vetted U.S.-based independent labs. Customer service is available seven days a week from 7.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time through live chat, phone, and email. Bulk Supplements products are produced in an FDA registered and inspected manufacturing facility. So, if you want quality supplements at a quality price, Bulk Supplements is the company for you. Bulk Supplements, clean and pure bulk supplements. Check the link in the description section below for more information. The Who That Daily.com. That's right, the Who That Daily.com. Your one stop mm. shop for everything New Orleans Saints, New Orleans Pelican, LSU Tigers, mm. even the top flight boxing. So if you're a Who That and you're looking for a place to stay up on your team, the Who That Daily.com is your site. The Who That Daily.com for the sport Who That in all of us. Who that family? Check out the Pro Shop. That's right, the Pro Shop is the platform store where you can go and buy all the latest merch to support the platform. Available at the Pro Shops, we have dozens of hundreds of products available for you and your family. Unisex tees for men and women, hoodies and sweatshirts, tank tops, kids and baby items, long sleeve tees, mugs, pillows, wall art, bath bedding face masks, phone cases, stickers, bags, fanny packs, socks, hats, and many other items. Please feel free to check out the Pro Shops. The link is in the description section below. And remember, it helps the platform continue to grow. So check out the Pro Shop and who that too.
Good out to the black and gold family members in the building as we return off a of break. Big ups to the family. You and Yaren, welcome back for this inside of the show. Big ups to all the family members. We thank you all you guys for being on the show today as we continue to move forward. Big ups to you and much love to all the family members in the live stream. I appreciate y'all. And to let the family members know the live line is activated. 504-475-4482. We are in the, the building, 504-475-4482. Live lines are active and open to listen to the calls from the Great Saint Think Tank, questions, concerns, comments. What do you think that will happen in the matchup uh, with the Tampa Bay Suckaneers, among other things? We in the building, fam. Get the live line up and give us a ring, 504-475-4482. 504-475-4482. What you think about uh, what's going to happen in the upcoming matchup? What you think about Quan Alexander acquisition? Were you satisfied with what the Saints did in terms of picking up talent? Uh, do you think we ain't do enough? Put it in the chat or give us a call 504 and talk to the great Saint Think Tank and the rest of the Who Dat Nation. We are in the building. Big ups to you. Who Dat to you, Saints booming. I see you, fam. Much love to you and yearns. On this one, and y'all, thank y'all for joining the show. Thank y'all for supporting the stream, man. Appreciate y'all. Much love to y'all, man. Seriously. All right, let me go to the chat before we receive uh, phone calls. Remember, fam, the 504475. BR fitted 225. Who that to you, fam? I see you in the building. Nola Balls, what's up, fam? Big ups to you. Welcome to the live stream as well. And let's hit the, the chat up. Thank you, Crass, for uh, uh, putting up the links, fam. Also, thank you, Derek, as well. Appreciate the family members helping out there. Uh, Iceman says, man, I'm going to be honest, the secondary is on notice. They can't have any communication issues this game at all. Uh, that's that's true. I mean, how much more are we going to take? You know, seriously, how much more of this are we going to take? You no, know, sooner or later, they got to get it right. You know what I'm saying? You got to. Lee says, Lee Wood, who that T says, Q, two days ago, you brought Bob Marley. <laughs> and Vaughn Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two days ago you brought Bob Marley and Vaughn Johnson <laughs> back from the dead and had them side by side talking today I want to hear from Sam Mills <laughs> add Tom Benson to the comment on Coach Payton <laughs> uh, more like, like uh, Bob Marley Jr. And uh, and uh, 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 Ronaldo Turnbull. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. All right, man. All right. All right, family. Uh, you got to see a few family members. Hold on here. Uh, that was funny. Thank you, Lee. Big ups to you, Lee. That, that, that was funny as hell, man. That's funny. All right. Here we go. Here we go. All right, family. Thanks for calling the Great Saint Thank Tank. Who's on the line? Can't hear me, fam. Hello, hello. You're live on air. All right. I can't hear wherever it is. Try again, fam. We'll get you in there. Uh, somebody was saying they can't get in. Uh, I think that was... Okay, Iceman. All right. Try it again, Iceman. I couldn't hear you, bro. Try it again. All right. Oh, Henry. What's up, oh, Henry? Who that to you, brother? Good to see you in the chat, bro. Big up to you. Trey Joseph. What's up, Skittle? Skittle Q, who that to you, bro? Good to see you in the chat, man. Big ups. Big ups to the fam. All right. All right. That was funny as hell, man. I'm sorry. Lee, Lee, well, that was funny, bro. That was funny, Lee. That was funny. Uh, Lee says, Q, Marvin Hagler mentioned that. Alan Mentor uh, uh, rest. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for that, bro. That was funny, Lee. That was funny. All right. All right, let's keep going. Jermaine, see, I think we should take them taste and plays out for a little while because those plays waste our downs. Very, very true. It worked, like I said, it worked It worked for the Chicago Bears because the Bears' defense was so dreadful. I thought we should have ran in more. We probably had 150 rush yards on them. Thank you for joining the great Saint Thank Tank. Is that you, Iceman? Yes, sir. Iceman checking in. How you doing, my brother? Oh, I can't call it, man. I'm just chilling, just chilling. What's on your hey, mind man. today, bro? Hey, man, as usual, got a couple bullet points, folks. Uh, got a couple things that I want to talk about, man. Um, first thing is, 
Uh, I didn't know Drew Brees had, had uh, you know, was on the injury list for the shoulder. I didn't know that, man. Mm-hmm. That was, that was, uh, that's quite a, uh, I don't know if I should be concerned about that or if it, or, or what's going on, but uh, that's not normal. It, it, I think the last time I seen Drew Brees on the injury list would have to be last year with the thumb. Uh, but before that, I don't think I've ever seen Drew Brees on the injury list. <laughs> um, man, so I I, that's, that's kind of interesting, man. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, I, I don't know, Q. I mean, what, 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 what's going on with that? You know, what, what, like, what, like um, is it because Sean Payton throwing the ball too much? Um, I put down in the chat earlier. I was like, "Well, since he's since he uh, had having a shoulder uh, issue, is this gonna you know force Sean Payton to run the ball this game, or or <laughs> you know?" No, nah, I mean that, that that's just really what. As soon as I saw that, that's what I thought. Is that gonna force him to run the ball this game? I mean, clearly you're not gonna have Drew throwing the ball thirty, forty times. Uh, with, with, with a uh, with a with a hurt shoulder, I mean that would be completely uh, embarrassing, you know. Um, <laughs> you know, I man, I'm serious. But then again, Coach Sean Payton, hey. he probably he probably he probably beat his chest and and and, and, and shoot him up with the Tyrod Taylor juice and have him <laughs> throwing it all the time. You never know with Sean Payton. You never know. He probably beat his chest. He, you know, see that's the man. Look, let let, know, let, let me. Let me stay in order, man. I ain't going to start going off. Anyway, that's something that I was thinking. That could be kind of disconcerting for the uh, for the game because, you know, Drew is is the leader, man. He, he is the leader. And, you know what I'm saying, we need him at optimal condition. You know, especially we don't we don't need these type of things early in the season. Midway, we still got eight games left. We, we, we don't need that. We don't need Drew uh, going into the playoffs or going into the uh, – the, the the long haul of the season ailing a, a, a shoulder injury, man, for real. Isn't it crazy how you know his, the beginning of his the beginning of his career with the Saints was about a shoulder injury, and now him on the back end, you know, what I'm saying he dealing with something else with a shoulder. I just thought that was kind of uh, interesting too, man. So let's let's you know you got to put this dude in the best position, man. You got to run the ball, and I told you before, Q. I don't know what the problem is with Latavius Murray. He don't fumble the ball. I'd, I'd like to know why he can't get the ball more. I'd like to know why. What's wrong with him? He damn near averages five yards to carry. He doing his job. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he not a problem outside of the of the, of the building. You you rarely hear anything about Latavius Murray outside of. It ain't like he off the field issue. I'd like to know why he can't get the ball more. I, you know the dude producing. He doing everything you want him to do. He can catch the ball out of the backfield. Stop running down Alvin Kamara, man. You wore him down last season. The dude was hurt. You still put him on the field. There's nothing wrong with using Latavius Murray. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? But, man, going into this game, I just hope Sean Payton don't want to do a lot of grandstanding, a lot of hot dogging and beating his chest because we know how he gets, family. And I have to keep it balanced. You know what I'm saying? I see a lot of people happy uh, for the wins and stuff like that, and I am too. But we got to keep it balanced. You know what I'm saying? We can't just let them off the hook because they, you know what I'm saying, they winning. Because we were 13-3 and last year, and we and, and we all know what happened. So we got to keep it balanced, man. Uh, I'm looking at the defense. <sighs> we're going to have to rely heavily on the pass rush, man, because I'm losing faith in the secondary to become the secondary that I thought that they would be. I'm just going to keep it real. If nobody else is going to say it, I'm going to say it. I'm not trying to be negative, but I'm losing faith in this secondary. Um, Marshawn Lattimore had two interceptions. I, I mean, he had an interception, had a chance at another one. Um, you know, I thought he did okay last game, but you know, he still gave up a touchdown on the uh, on the back end in the corner. So, and I saw some plays where he was getting turned around again. So, I need to see you know these guys play. You know, I want to see them just firing on all cylinders, man. I don't want to see them no miscommunications in the secondary. No more. Like, I, I, you know, I don't want to see that no more, man. I think we need to – whatever we did against the Lions, I don't understand why we can't copy and paste that game plan. That worked. Run the ball. Like, just run the ball and play defense. Um, I don't know if Quan Alexander going to be around uh, to play this game, but uh, he would have been a nice addition. 
Uh, dude can make plays, get interceptions and stuff like that. I saw a lot of his uh, highlights when, once I watched the, uh, the live when you uh, when you first talked about him uh, getting traded. I went down and watched some of his highlights and stuff like that. When he on the field, this dude can ball, man. You know what I'm saying? He 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 can really play. So I think it would be a, he he would be a good addition. You just he just has to stay on the field. And health has not been in the same strong suit the last couple of years. You know, we have a lot of players that's been ailing injuries and that's been injury prone. You know, uh, Davenport, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Rankins, Anzalone, Kiko Alonso, you know what I'm saying? All those guys, man. They all, you know, Trey Hendrickson, you know, all those guys have been, you know, ailing injuries and had nagging injuries and stuff like that. So hopefully he doesn't join the Brady Bunch and, and be, uh, you know, the next guy up as far as another injury prone player. So, um, but yeah, man, I thought that the, uh, Drew being on the injury list was kind of interesting. Um, I think that Sean Payton needs to, to, to stop, you know, listening to the superlatives. And I think he needs to, uh, you know, just, just run the ball. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but there was one more thing I wanted to say. Um, uh, and that was about the secondary. Um, I think I came up with three reasons, um, and I and I told uh, TJ on the State of the Saints podcast this, and this and this was more about uh, Lattimore, just because I noticed that he was struck kind of struggling before last game, but it can apply to all of the secondary players, really, and um, that was that the coaches don't hold them accountable. Uh, no one gets benched when they play uh, kind of bad the whole game. No one gets set down. No one gets screamed at and stuff like that. And I know that you can only do so much screaming because these are like grown men. So you can only do so much screaming at them, but the screaming that they can do at them to just light a fire under them, I don't see a lot of the coaches doing that. Um, The second thing was, like I talked to you before, there isn't anybody that gives them any competition. So, you know, if I know that there's nobody behind me that's a threat, I kind of feel like I can play with a lot more leeway and mess up and then you couple that with the fact that the coaches don't scream at them, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Then that that allows players to that allows players to get very comfortable. And um, the third thing was, I feel like sometimes down us as a family base, and not like you know, what I'm saying I don't know how else to say it, but I feel like we give uh, we put players on a pedestal too fast. We put coaches on a pedestal too fast. I don't know what the why that is the culture. Uh, down here but we put people on a pedestal way too fast we give them you know all type of nicknames and all this type of stuff you know like they've been locking stuff down for for eight nine years and the reality is they've only been here three or four years so we give we kind of aid in giving them um you know kind of make them smell themselves a, a lot more than 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 how they actually should so that was just something that i was thinking about maybe has going on in the secondary because you know how it is, Q. A guy makes one or two plays in a game, and then, you know what I'm saying, we sing his praises forever and ever. You know what I'm saying? So right. we like we got we to gotta stop that. We can't just give these guys a, 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 some sort of crutch to lean on. They have to prove themselves, you know, game in and game out. Every day, every game is a new opportunity and a new uh, game for you to cement your legacy and cement yourself. You can't just, you can't after three, four years, you can't just think that you made it. Cause that was the problem with Ken Crawley. He didn't have to play three, four years to get that. He got it after his first year in 2017. When he played good, he thought he made it. And then he came back and he was complacent. You see what I'm saying? Right. So we gotta, you know, so we, we can't just, we can't just praise and give these guys adulation. That's something that they gotta do like Smith Barney. They gotta earn it. You understand where I'm coming from? Yeah, you're right, bro. That, I agree with you wholeheartedly, bro. They got to be able to to, to play up to par. And why? And why you was um, why you was uh um, uh, uh, talking? I put up the Dollar Tree. Quartet. I'm gonna put them back on screen for the family members who probably missed it. <laughs> They sung earlier today. Y'all missed a really good show. They, they opened up the broadcast for us, man, after the deal. They were absolutely fantastic. I'm going to give a shout out to the Dollar Tree Quartet. Big ups to the Dollar Tree Quartet. They were awesome, man. We talked about P.J. Williams to the left. P.J. Williams, uh, Ken Crawley right there next to P.J. 
Uh, you see uh, Justin Hardy. He 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 slung absolutely lovely. Patrick Robinson had the deep parts of the song on the day. He was it was absolutely amazing. The Dollar Tree Quartet, as you can see, Aaron Glenn is supporting them in their singing venture. And even Denny Green, you can look back there and see uh, Dennis Allen back there uh, hiding, tucked in between, showing support. So the Dollar Tree Quartet, these are the guys uh, behind Laddie Daddy, uh, uh, Janoris Jenkins, and also uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson. This is the reason why uh, the, the guy, these are guys are not bench. It's the Dollar Tree Quartet. So uh, they can't cover. They can't cover their own bed, but they can sing and, and entertain your ass. So, I mean, at least they could do something right, right in my on. opinion. <laughs> Come on, man. What, 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 what is this? The uh, the Great Value Singing Group, man? Come on. There you go. There you go. The great Value. I had, great I, value I, I had to, group, I, man. Iceman, I had to drop it down way below Great Value. I had to go to the Dollar Tree. And, Love. <laughs> and let me tell you something. I went to the Dollar Tree, and they were standing up there together. And I said, man, what are y'all y'all doing up in here? They said, man, we forming a new group called the Dollar Tree Quartet. I said, wow, wow, I was just thinking about that the other day. Could you guys come on and talk and sing for us? They said, sure, we'll come on. And you heard them. They was absolutely amazing. So I oh, love it. So oh. big ups to the Dollar Tree Quartet. Uh, thumbs up to the Dollar Tree Quartet. Yeah, man. Hopefully they don't be linking up with a uh, Reber's uh, Brad, uh, Brad Band or something like that. <laughs> yeah, hopefully they don't be linking up with them singing all behind the Superdome. Uh, you know, <laughs> with, with, instead of instead of singing, what they need to do is get out there and, and do uh, some push-ups and, and then lunches or something. You know, I'm tired of seeing that, man. And you and that was the point I made in the chat, man. No one in the secondary can hide this. Everyone has a tough assignment. So that's why I say all hands have to be on deck. So you can't rely on winging the ball all over the place. And, um, man, you, 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 we, we got to win as a team, man. We need complimentary football. And that's why I say I haven't seen complimentary football from the same player. But the defense feeds off the offense, and the offense feeds off the special teams, putting them in putting the field position and stuff like that. Man, I forget. Trail made a good point on the last line. We had the ball, you know, at, at midfield, and we couldn't punch it in. So, you know, it's not just the defense. Like you said, it's all it's all out. Third and fourth quarter. You're a little low, Ice Man. Hello. There you go. You, you, it's a little yeah. low, bro. No, I was just making the point that Trail Trail made a good point. Uh, about how the offense got the ball at midfield and they wasn't able to punch it in. Uh, so we just that's just a lot of stuff we just got to look out for, man. Just executing, cleaning up a lot of the mental mistakes and the mental lapses. And the defense just has to play with their hair on fire and just play as a unit. And 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 you write about that Chauncey Gardner Johnson thing, man. That dude, he's he 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 is a really good player, man. But they they do have to kind of nip that that that. The, uh, the things and uh, the stuff that he's doing in the bud because you don't want that to hurt you in a playoff game. That's right. Especially especially in critical moments where it could be like a game-defying call where, you know what I'm saying, he may, you know, go up, you know what I'm saying, you never know with him. And that's why I say we got to hold the players accountable. We can't give them nicknames or stuff like that after only being in the, in, in the Saints uniform for two years. We can't do that. We got to hold these guys accountable and at least – Put the fire behind them to make them earn it to live up to the, to the expectations of you know what I'm saying the nicknames that they're trying to have and all the all the cool handshakes and and and, and talking mess and and all of that type of stuff. We got to hold them dudes accountable, man. We can't just give them a pass and you know keep only bringing up the good stuff that they do. We got to talk about what we can do as a team to get better because down the line when you play tougher teams. They're not going to make as many mental mistakes as the Chargers and as the Panthers and as, you know what I'm saying, the the, uh, the Oakland, uh, I mean, the, uh, the Raiders and stuff like that. They're not going to, you know, you let teams like that hang around and they'll come back and beat you because they're seasoned. They know how to do it. They've yeah. been in, uh, in in dog fights and stuff like that. They know how to win. You know what I'm saying? You can't, right. you can't leave, you can't leave any meat on the bone for them teams. You need, you got to, you have to win obsolete. Don't leave in it. Don't leave it in the referee's hands. Don't leave it in the, in the other team's hands. Decide your fate walking into the game, and how you do that is by utter domination. 
right. domination. You don't leave anything. You take it all. Have a take. Have a take no prisoners mentality. Right. Wipe everyone out. You know, kill and let the, and, and, if, and if you do that, if you wipe them out and dominate them, they won't have you won't be, you won't have to worry about a three point win because you'll be up twenty and thirty points or fifteen and ten points. You know, so you got to just. You know, the Saints have to get some type of, some type of killer instinct. I think that's what it is. They got to get some type of killer instinct or something, man. You know, and just put the you know that you just stand on these people and just get them up out of here and don't allow, don't allow them to to get any type of momentum. Just take it all away from them, you know. Yes. But that's all I wanted to say, man. And um, yeah, man, who that? I'm looking forward to the game. And uh, man, uh. Hopefully everybody doing uh, good. I, I I don't know what's going on with the hurricane out there, but hopefully everybody uh, is safe and uh, back. You know, with your families and stuff like that, man. Everybody doing good, man. I love y'all family. Who that, man? Ice Thank man checking out, yo. Thank you, Ice man. Appreciate you, bro. Same to you, my friend. And who that? That's the Ice man. Always chiming in, dropping the knowledge. Big ups, the Ice man, uh, as well. And uh, I'd like to thank uh, Janicia Webb. Thank you, Janicia. Uh, for subscribing to the Gray Saint Dang Tank, Janicia Webb, who that to you. Also, big ups to Matthew Huggins. Good to see you, Matthew. Big ups to you as well, and big ups to the family members as well. Uh, Nuds Dar Sports Channel, big ups to you as well. So, Janicia Webb and Matthew Huggins, who that to you, and welcome to the Gray Saint Dang Tank, man. Who that? All right, now we got next on the line. Uh, Uncle Paulie, is that you, sir? What's going on, Q? I, I like this new thing. The, 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 the Dollar Tree Quartet. You know they're going to be like, <laughs> having a show tonight. I mean, have a show Saturday night. They're going to be on Rue Bourbon. Sean Payton, their new manager, they're going to be having them hats and them suitcases out there trying to get some money. It might be a dollar fifty, but you know how it is. They're worth the penis. You just make him sing it. Yeah. Well, you know, it costs- Zingy, don't let him sing because he toned it, so let him hum it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought you were like an Uncle Paul, and that was funny. Oh, I just thought, man, I love it, That, that was, that was pretty it. funny opening it. up the show with them guys, man. They set the tone for tonight. And it's good, always good to get a family member a surprise and a treat. Uh, uh, entertainment, <laughs> you know how they go. <laughs> we, we, hey, hey, Q, I hate to say it, but the safe secondary are getting to be like the old Mike Tyson bum of the month. Yeah, let's find that bomb go. We're gonna yeah. knock him out in my two or three rounds. That's you know right, how that is. that's right. They Tyson go, did me that. That's right. You know how it go, brother Paul. They go outside, look for a yeah, cab driver, man. say, hey, You want to make some quick dollars? Yeah, yeah, what gotta do? You just come on and box for a few rounds, we'll give you a hundred bucks. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they used to do Uncle Paul and they used to run them out there and, and get that what he called them, the bum of the month club he get guys wasn't good fighters and then, and then he just knock, knock, the, knock the hell out of them to build up his record until he fight some of the better ones so that's that, there you go that's how a lot of them got 20 and 0 and 30 and 0 they wasn't right. fighting nobody no they wasn't so fighting they got nobody a, 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 some real competition there. you saw a different kind of fight that's then. right well, he got, we had to bite on ears and everything after he took on the vanity, he couldn't knock him down, so he'd start chewing on his ears. <laughs> he did man, that twice. You know what, you know what Q? I, I'm an old boxing man myself. You know, after Buster, Buster Douglas beat Tyson, he was done then, Q. Yeah. Because so wasn't nobody scared of him no more. No, you know, not, Tyson had that thing him. of being the baddest man on the planet. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. You're right. And so he, 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 Buster Douglas knocked him out. Man, there wasn't nobody scared of him no more. Tyson was never the same. I, actually, Q, I really think Tyson should have went on retired and, you know, took a couple of years off, you know, boxing like football. You know, I remember Jason Witten took a year off. Sometimes you need to take a year off and get your head, you know, together. Cause that's a lot of pounding, you know, week in and week out. What you think? That's true. You got Sometimes you can step away, man. You, you got to step away sometimes to clear your head. Uh, you know, the game, uh, you know, your, your sense of focus again. And remember, it's a brutal, it's a brutal sport. You know, you got people punching you upside your damn head, scrambling your brain, and you, that wasn't meant to happen. So, I think uh, the thing that usually was supposed to happen when you a fighter is you're supposed to learn how to elude punches. You're not supposed to take them. I mean, you're supposed that's to, and that's what that's what Muhammad Ali taught. He said the sweet science is to hit, not be hit. So, that's and, it. and that's what that's what you're supposed to use head movement and everything like that. But some of these other fighters, they so lazy they don't use no head movement and by the time they get ready to fight they can barely say the alphabet 
They can barely go through count to 100. Well, you're right. You know, that was at least a, a, the way of the world. A man ain't got no footwork going to be in his kitchen, man, you know. Right. You know, that, but, you know that, but you know what? Fraser was able to offset that, all that bobbing and weaving. You know, Fraser could bob and weave. Ooh, woo. He right. when he get down low, he was hard to hit, you know. Right. So he he come up in there, but when he got on that inside, he was in trouble. Yep, that was his game. The, so the, the Fraser was punches. small, but he had a lot of power coming right. up from low, you know. Right, that's how he Fraser was. dropped. Yeah, hey man, he, so he called a smoking Joe for nothing. Like the longer the fight went, hey, he was in trouble. You right. know, till he ran the George Foreman. You know, you 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 as bad as you are, QT. You running somebody big and bad than you. You know how it is. <laughs> Yeah, he knocked he knocked yeah. Frazier down. He knocked Frazier down. I don't know seven times. It seemed like in that fight. Oh, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, that was a mismatch nightmare. To be honest, that was mismatch nightmare for Joe Frazier. Yeah, Foreman yeah, was I just got, Foreman was the wrong Frazier style. Not, for him. Almost retired after that, but mm-hmm. you know Ali kind of begged him to stick around. So they had such great fights. So they really, they didn't like each other. They respected one another. But you don't mm-hmm. find that too much, you. No. But you know what? I, I hope CD, CD Deuce still had no residual effects from that whopping he got. You know, mm-hmm. there was a time, man, he did that to Mayor Blunt. They had him, Mayor Blunt would have had him on Super Mass now the rest of his life. <laughs> so, you know, you didn't hit nobody. You actually pulled a fight. They took their helmet off and book. You know, hey, you know, Lyle Alzado took a helmet and hit one the live right. in the face with it. He That's took right. the man, hit, ripped it off and hit him with it. Q, yeah, he yeah. didn't care. Right. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't play that. <laughs> yeah, but, he, that, but but Ice Man, we spoke about that. That's the thing about Chauncey Gardner Johnson yeah. sticking his finger in the band and in, in the guy's face and all that kind of stuff. And I'm surprised they didn't check him then because he was out of control doing that. There was absolutely no uh, reason for you to be doing that, especially the way they yeah, called games against the Saints. I would have got thrown out the game. Yeah, they, 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 they would have hit him with a, 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 a no a sportsman unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, which is 15 oh, yards. Yeah, when the close game like what it was could impact the game in a negative fashion. So, like I said, it's it's that type of stuff can't happen, and that's a sign to a small degree of undisciplined, uh, undisciplined team. You can't have oh, yeah. Chelsea going to Johnson doing stuff office, like that. He had a man function on that play, Q. You know mm-hmm. that that was just that was just you know you know that's something Marcus was did. You know at least he didn't do it that game, but you know Johnson, you know Q. You know, you know, sometimes stuff just like Gary Green. Once you get one place, if you don't get that area clean up, Q, it'll spread to something else more serious. So the whole secondary stinks. I mean, it just stinks, <laughs> man. And the Saints have had some bad secondaries. I can remember the more, man, Toy Cook, Vinci Glenn, and Milton Mack and all that, man. Team knew that they could throw the ball deep on the Saints because the Saints didn't have no cover, good cover corners, Q. You got to have people that got speed. And even if they ain't got speed, like you said, you got to have a safety back there to help your corner out. You know your corner can't, you know, deal with a receiver at a foot race. He ain't going to catch him if you get behind him. You put somebody up under that, Q. Right. You cover that up. But like you said, Q, everybody got exposed. Everybody played bad. From Lattimore, Janora Jenkins, he had his head turned around like he didn't know he was done. I'm like, I, I don't know Q did, you know. I had something that was uh, uh, Lattimore over 30. Uh, I know Janora Jenkins over 30. Maybe some some of that getting a little long in the tooth back there, Q, because you got to be quick with these young receivers. They ain't playing, man. What you say? You're right. We we are kind of aged a bit. We th- we thinking like we can get uh, squeezed blood from a turnip, so to speak, with Malcolm Jenkins, get good two years out of Malcolm before we discard him after the second year. His contract uh, be ran out because the Saints do have a provision. Uh, after the second year to kind of nullify Jenkins' contract because basically oh, this, yeah. this, when he played, he might be out here like Adam Maloney and could uh, be. he throw Alonzo. It, it, he looking terrible. Very, very well could be. I mean, the thing is, too, Woo. also, with, you know, uh, the deep passes should stop uh, once we get uh, Alexander on the field to cover the tight end because that's what he's here for. Uh, the blitz as well, but to protect and cover that area of the field, come out and guard that tight end. And uh, that'll help keep Jenkins out away from there. And Jenkins will sit back there and probably play high a lot. And I think that's a simple way of fixing your secondary is to keep the two safeties high. That eliminates, should eliminate the deep ball being thrown over the top of you uh, and, that, and cover the areas of the field back there and kind of keep everything in front of the defense, so to speak. And then they'll just prince, uh, preach principles of t- uh, gang tackling, running to the ball, converging on the ball, holding up the ball, carry and stripping the ball out. Because the defense, and that's let that be the the mindset in the second half 
of the season for the New Orleans Saints defense. We need to create more turnovers. Like they had a better outing against the Chicago Bears. They sacked the quarterback five times, and they were able to, uh, you know, get multiple turnovers despite the fact that the turnovers didn't actually, like Marshawn did get the, the interception. He dropped one uh, as well, which a lot of family members astutely mentioned that that could have put the Saints in, in bad field goal position. But yeah, yeah. but that would, in, in my opinion, I think it'll put them in good field goal position because it'll put them in a position to have a long drive to eat the clock. So I mean, that's right. another way you can look at it too. Because if the Saints would use the the run, because the team the Bears couldn't stop them, they could eat up five or six minutes off the clock using run it as opposed to getting it and scoring and giving it back to them. We got to hold yeah. on to that that sucker and work that clock. Don't, don't, to, don't, don't seem like he don't know how to fix that for nothing and work. You take patience, you brother Paul. That's cool. And just give the ball back to your opponent. That's yeah, that, that's that's what I'm saying. It's like, listen, when you get an opportunity to get an interception, I don't care where it is on the field. Make the damn play, because it's not. It's just when you get an interception, it it it, it impacts the defense, their offense, very negatively and up low and brings a major surge to your offense and the team overall. That's what turnovers do. It's their mo- what they call energy. They call it momentum. It's just another term for energy. When you slam energy from one side to the other, turnovers create that energy swing that pull down the opposing team and pl- uplift your 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 team play. So it give an opportunity for the Saints to be able to have a long drive in which they really need it so they can kind of put the, the kibosh on this team because the team couldn't stop them from running wow. the ball. They couldn't. Three of your four wide receivers was missing, so that that could have been the, the the mode of transportation anyway. But when you but, but also they stole one from Demario Davis, in which he forced the fumble. The guy called it back. So see what I'm saying? If they do that. Right. They, that that right there impacts the the, uh, the opposing team very negatively. It really does. It really it's like punching them in the gut when you get a turnover off of them. You know, because they have oh, to recover. Yeah. And then an uppercut in the knockout is when you not only get the turnover, but then you score a touchdown off the turnover. That is triply bad. There, there you go, Q. See, 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 Shell Page, you've been watching some of them old moral clips and film. I was trying to get Martin Anson down and just kick it out. You can't score three points. Try that against Tampa Bay and see how far you get, Q. Let them mm-hmm. try that on Tampa Bay. Uh, Tampa Bay going to be driving trying to get touchdown. They ain't going to be trying to set no field goal like that. You know, right. so Bruce Aaron is a, is a, is, you know, he, he's a, he's a balanced coach, but he know how to throw that ball. See, see, uh, the secondary really should to get tested with the receivers, man. And not only that, Q, they, uh, Leonard Fournette ain't going to have no bum game this time. This boy going to be trying to get a hundred plus on us. What you think? Uh, they, they're going to try to rack. They're going to want it. They're going to try to embarrass the Saints is what they're going to try to do. This is a statement. This is a sta- that's a statement game, and people don't understand. You don't go out and go reach and get Antonio Brown because they don't feel they're good enough to beat you. They're a good team with what they have. They've been decimating teams uh, throughout the uh, season so far. They've been beating teams pretty handily with what they have. Oh, and, of course, they just put up 30, 40 points, too, Q. There ain't been no 10 to 3 wins and all yeah. that. Tom Brady like the score, man. Well, and that's true, and, and that's what happened in this mm-hmm. game against the Giants. They overlooked the Giants. But they were, but they got a little help from the referees. They did come back in that game, but they got a little help oh. from the officials too. They were overlooking the Giants, and the Giants came to play and almost stole that game. They should have actually won that game and beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because they were looking past them, looking at the Saints. So you know, thanks to the refs not get making the right call, they stole that game away. But Antonio Brown was brought here to to embarrass the Saints. They not only want to beat you because remember the Saints beat them by ten. Tom Brady doesn't like that. He doesn't like to lose like that. And his whole goal was to beat the Saints and Drew Brees. So this is a very personal. Yeah, this is very true, personal. It is. And he the guy behind on the touchdown record. So you know he's going to be chunking that thing. Yeah. I can see him going deep to Brown. That might be the first pass. So Bruce Aaron going to try to get Antonio yeah. the ball. And he's going to be looking for get soon, Marcus Williams. But, Come on. And and what, your best, your best, your best, oh, no. and the best defense is an offense. Being that you knowing that, you need to, you need to hold on to that ball. You need to steal the yep. possessions away from Tom Brady's offense by having long possessions and not scoring quickly and giving the Buccaneers an opportunity to compete with you like you did to San Francisco 49ers last, last year when you had a 40-bird 40, 40 game. You got to be smarter than that. You have your running game right now. You, you Even though you get Emmanuel Sanders back, but remember you're getting Emmanuel Sanders back who was hot when he left, but he's missed two games. 
So he's going to be a little That's rusty. Good. Mike to, Thomas. He got to be a lab at working right back in there. You know, he might be a little off. So, he's going to be off. You know, hey. Especially Mike, yeah, Mike might. Thomas is going to be off. He missed he missed a oh, bunch yeah, of games. Man. He missed every game since week one game. Yeah, so, I mean, he plays really well. All right. All right so, so you don't put him trying to chunk and throw him that deep through him with slant and the in and the option and passes, you know. Shorten the game up, Q. Because, you know, they should do you know, If they want to go deep, don't get me wrong. Let Drew do it every now and then. But if you want to throw the ball, like you say, but you can't get this through. You know, Sean Payton like a pitch in the child. You tell him, if you use the taste of here package, let taste of here throw the ball. Stop letting him run it. No, every time they he'll come out there, he want to run the ball. Okay, keep on trying to get Tampa Bay and see how successful that's going to be. Because you're going to want to be able to do that a couple of times, kid. True that. You bro, as always, Brother Paul, you own the money as well, as no, always. I know that's what he's going to do. He's going to be trying that little bit. It's, it's, it's 39. He go take three. He'll try to run the ball. I think he's going to make all that nine yards by himself. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're absolutely that's right. Not that's not smart. You got the you got you got you got Troutman. I, I bet the Troutman ain't got ten catches. Q. Whenever you got a chance, look up Troutman's uh, stats. I don't think he's caught a touchdown. No, nah, nah, he don't have he don't have a touchdown. I think he I, I think he has. I can look it up, but I know for a fact from a statistical oh, breakdown, he don't have catches. he don't have very much. He don't he don't have five catches. I, mean, that's all. I, I can look I can look it up as we go. But yeah, they don't. Yeah, he, yeah. But he he's not. They're not using him in that capacity. They're using more. Right. They're using more. Uh, of uh, of, you know, of him as a blocker, then. Right, so, you know, if you look at it, Q, Jerry Cook is a long, is done got older, long in the two. Okay, use him to block a little bit more. You got your young gun Trotman, chunk him the ball down there. Because I think he's three a, a Jimmy Graham in the rough, but they won't use him like that. Yeah, he, he got three catches for thirty-four yards. That's what Adam Troutman has thus far: three catches for thirty-four yards. That's how I like for them pig in stats. You know, he, 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 he ain't doing too they much in Chicago. They yeah, run they, him off of that they don't. Wide. They don't throw the ball at Troutman very much. Three catches for thirty-four yeah. yards, but he averages eleven. He averages he averages eleven point three yards per catch. So every time you throw him the ball, okay. it's a first down. So that's a positive thing to look wow. at it in terms of that. But we just don't use Troutman at that capacity. You know, they use him mostly as a blocker, and eventually, yeah. you know, that's a similar path to how Josh Hill was originally. Well, they had Josh well, well, reverse pass actually because Josh Hill wasn't a really good blocker. He developed into a really good blocker, and when he did that, that added to his game. But he didn't right. help. But it didn't also because Josh Hill was a fantastic receiving tight end. He couldn't block right. work to save his life. Then he started. He right. dedicated himself to that. Became really good at it. But he kind of lost it on the receiving ends. If he would have been able to keep the blocking aspect and bring and bring that receiving aspect as well. And then the longevity right. aspect, he would have been, he would have been quite the phenomenal player to, that we have. But the injuries and and then of course the team not looking at him as the the man no more. They tried to give him that when they got rid of uh, Jimmy Graham, but ultimately they went to uh, Ben Watson, who balled that year, mm-hmm. and then then he had an opportunity to do that. So then he just settled into a backup role, which is where he is now. But Young Troutman right. is a guy like Bob mm-hmm. Rose, our, our friend of ours, came on the show and said that Troutman. Is right where he believes he's supposed to be because the Saints are viewing him as a future weapon uh, in the system as well. Uh, Revolt Control, give me just a second, brother Paul. Right. Revol- Revolt right. Control, I see you, fam. I just seen your your uh, message, bro. Uh, the li- the line. I'm sorry, I missed your call, bro. Uh, he said he couldn't get in. Uh, try one more oh. time, Revolt, if you can, bro. The line is open. Uh, and try one more time. I don't know why it was messing up earlier, but call again. Yeah, it didn't bro. Like that. You kick me off. Hey, call, call again, bro. I'll get you on the line open for you. I'll get you on the show. All right, and also big ups to the rest of the family members. Lori Hackler, who that to you, Lori? Good to see you in the chat, baby. Uh, Dada, who that to you, Dada? Much love to you, Dada. I see your family. Thank you for joining us today. Melanin God 504, who that to you, fam? Good to see you in the chat as well. Big ups to you and Yearn on this one. Money Johnson, what's up, Money Johnson? Lance Kelly, who that to you? Soldier Arlene's 504. Who that to you? Welcome to the stream, fam. Big ups to you. Foxy, good to see Foxy. Foxy uh, is a real estate person. Look like she about to sell her first house. So let's give Foxy some love. She's from the, she from the, from the oh, nine. Right. All the family members in the Who That Nation. Foxy's about, she's a she, she's a new realtor to the game. So she learning it. She about to sell her first property. Let's give some love to Foxy. Who that to you, Foxy? 
Much love to you. And may you sell a a million. Thanksgiving money, Q. That's right. (laughs) Let's give us some love, family. Who that to? Let's give us some love. Foxy, big ups to you, baby. Big ups to you. Tyrone Jones. Who that to? That's right. Let's sell it. I hope that she sell a thousand damn houses before the year end. Let me tell you something. So big ups to you. Uh, uh, let's see cookies. Uh, let's see L lit lit cookies. Is that what I'm looking at there? LTT cookies or whatever. Who that to you as well, family? Thank you. All right, give me just a second, brother Paul. That's probably revolt right there, chiming in. Okay, hold on here. All right, revolt. Yeah, that's that's you, my brother. Revolt. Are you in the building, bro? Can't hear him, Q. Oh, I can't hear him either. Revolt. Oh, hold on, brother Paul. Yeah, is that you, bro? No, that's you, brother yeah, Paul, right? Okay, okay, Revolt, oh, yeah. I got you. Hold on, bro, hold on just oh. a second. Okay, hold on, brother Paul, I got you on here. I don't know why it's oh, still ringing bro. like that. Hold on just a second. Hey, Revolt, if this catches you all, bro, uh, just call right back, okay? I'm trying to see why it's keep ringing like that, okay? Hold on here. Okay, see, that was it was. It cut him off there. Revolt call back, bro. I don't know what's going on. Revolt is tripping on Revolt for whatever reason. Tripping on everybody. But I reset it, bro. So the grimness, Q, the yeah, grimness. It won't, it won't stop us, brother Paul. You know yeah, how I feel Halloween. about that. Revolt call right back. I got you, bro. Uh, I had to reset it. It kept ringing over you while you was talking. I reset it. So just sign back and I'll get you in there, my brother. Just just letting you know I ain't hanging up on you uh, by on purpose. I, I reset it because it kept ringing. So call right back yeah, and I'll get you like in. like that too, Q. So we, it, that's what's up. All right. Big ups. Big ups to you. All right, brother Paul, back to you, my friend. Uh, 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 you got the flow. Yeah, yeah, Q. I call, like I said, uh, uh, and then, uh, he was in the, the Chargers game. I remember the Saints pull out. They had their five receiver set. But what Sean Payton fails to do, Q, don't just put Taysom Hill and Alvin Kamara in, in the five wide out set. Put uh, uh, Troutman out there. Put you know, put the put let let Jerry Cook catch the ball out of there. You know what I mean? You got to do different looks. You know, you just can't keep doing the same thing and thinking a different result. That's not gonna happen, Q, because right. teams gonna stop that. You know, and you know when you make it, Drew have to throw the ball. That other team gonna come with the blitz. They go, they go, they go, they go. Try to break that backside pressure, and you know, it, it, you know, there was a time, you know, Drew could try to get the ball out of there. He could feel that pressure coming, but now he getting hit and getting the ball stripped. You don't want that, you know. Right, you're right, brother Paul, and 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 that's a part of it, man. You know, we got, the, you know, we got we got we got to do something about that. You know what I'm saying? We got to do something about that. We got yeah, we got to get say, with the live being banged up. You know, both your tackles not a hundred percent. You know, Pete, that thumb probably ain't 100. percent I'm quite sure it ain't healed all the way fully. He probably got a pin or something in it, you know. And then you got you got you got Armstead, that knee and that, that calf still probably bothering him. He ain't 100. percent Then you have to go to Hurst. You just might well not even have no tackle in that up there, you know. So you got to stick, Drew. You got to get the ball. Got to run the ball. All and right, get the ball on quick passes. What's you know? up, Q? All right, we got brother Paul just ahead of you. Just a second, there, brother Paul. We got Revolt on there. All right, we all we it's we got a, it's all good now, Revolt. Just give me a, a few okay. seconds, my brother. Thank you for joining us. We got brother Paul right. right ahead of you, and when brother Paul get done, we'll we'll put you on there. All right. All right, brother Paul. Sorry about the interrupt you, my brother. I'm, the floor I'm glad you was able to get on. Yeah, Q, like I said, you got to do the different people. You know, like you see, Q, is it like is it like Sean Payton just stuck in square one? He don't feel like he can use nobody else in them little. Little, you know, little packages still take them here and have them come out. You got to institute somebody else. You got Devontae Harris, throw the ball to him deep. Or even you the movie, they are Q, we got to develop a, pa- a deep pass attack. You just can't go in the game thinking you're going to win them by three points. And then, be, and you know what? Trump ain't can bet on going into overtime and think he's going to beat Tampa Bay. Uh uh-uh, uh, that ain't going to happen. Uh, Tampa Bay ain't going to want to go into overtime, which they try to win the regulation. It, it does appear, and, and that's what I was trying to get uh, Black Sway, you know, to think about when he came on the show. And but Sway, rep- <laughs> but Sway, he 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 represents that though. You know, he's the kind of dude that you would show Peyton. We trust, I, yeah, I, I trust the Peyton, so. trust the Peyton, and you know, all this nonsense. But you know, no. that's, that's that's my little brother. I got love for him. But the reality right. is. I mean, the way I look at it is, 
is that we quite, you know, we've trusted Peyton for years and years and years, and it let us down. Oh. We had a Super Bowl, but I've been trying to pro prove to the rest of the family members and to a great deal, a lot of family members, you know, have, have, have come to the awareness about Peyton's not being the same coach as he was when he won in 09. He doesn't, oh, he doesn't believe in the running game as much as he did then. He didn't make the uncharacteristic mistakes that he's making now. And I believe it's sure. part of the fact that there is no accountability that's ringing him in, that's challenging his his uh, the calls that he's making. Like some of the there's yeah. there's several suspect no. calls yeah. that happen in the game, every game. The Taysom Hill package is disgusting. It, it, it's totally Taysom yeah. doesn't yeah. Taysom doesn't even look to throw the ball, man. If he doesn't even look, he just hikes the ball yeah, and turns into a running back. And I'm like, yeah, he don't uh, look like he's as excited as he used to be about to get up either. Q. You yeah. gotta look at your player, yeah, man. As a right. coach, you know. Right, that's absolutely right, brother you know, Paul. You drug out there against Chicago, like whatever. I hope I can get there. But, but hey, I thought man, you, but they thought uh, you were a quarterback. Speed, but the line can only block for so long. You gotta get there, baby. But you I, know? but I thought I thought you was a quarterback. That was the thing that you was telling right, everybody right. during the Super Bowl that you a quarterback. Right. And all of a sudden, you he get the money, and, that, right. and now when you get the money, you don't even look at throwing. You hike. He's he's in a shotgun for goodness sake. I mean, the play, the play, the play, I mean, see, and, and, that's why, and, 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 and that's why, and that's why I, I look at the game like I look at the game. Because when he hiked the ball and he ran for the, uh, he got the touchdown play, you know, he was in a shotgun. And so, so it wasn't like he was up under the center and he just took the ball and, and then in the end around, around the right tackle into the end zone. He was in a shotgun, got the ball and ran there. And the reason why that worked, it's because the bar, the Bears are god awful at stopping the run. Everybody right, in the stadium right. knew that Taysom Hill was going to get that ball because he don't even look right. or even pretend to look like he's going to throw the ball. That's true. But so, if, the, I mean, if the Bears would have had Tim made in that box, they might have got it. You they know what I mean? Got they would have they, they would have stood him up because. Oh, but, yeah. but see, that's the thing, though. I'm not. You know, it actually worked against the Bears because they were bad. But like I'm right. saying. You, the, if you look Try at the Tampa Bay, you know, you right, told. right. That's right. what I'm saying. You talking about top five because when, when you get an opportunity to the face the defense, got better over the weeks too. Q, they ain't like week one. You know what I mean? That's right. That's what I'm trying to tell the family members. Now. You're gonna see a difference, and they're gonna they're gonna understand it's eventually good, when when the when we when you match up against a team that has Super Bowl aspirations. Huh. Who have talent like you have talent? Yeah, yeah. You gonna see? We gonna see mano to mano what's going on. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. And I and like I said, I'm happy that we're winning games. But I'm looking at those teams because from a if you look at the Saints' schedule, back in the schedule, it is absolutely for their benefit. Ah, if the Saints had their had the, they got a little bit more discipline, maybe like 10, right. 10 to fifteen percent more discipline, they could finish out with wins. Maybe they'll be a little difficult for Kansas City, depending on what their offense looked like. Because if they can establish the run, which is you can't do right now, currently I can't see the Saints dueling it out with Kansas City. The best way to handle no, Kansas City is no. is to punish them you with the ground the game gun. and you keep know? Patrick Mahomes right. off the field so he can't gather right. a rhythm. That's the best way I can see you handling them. You have to dominate the clock against Kansas City and keep that offense off of the field. Your best defense is your offense. Meaning eating up the what clock five and six cute. minutes. He get ball rushes. control and run that thing. Hey, you he keep Tom Brady hot it, stuff off the field. Exactly. So you know, he, you pick your secondary part, but especially the way our secondary playing now, man. Shoot. Precisely, but that's the that's the whole. My whole point is, you can't yeah. you, you winning against you're barely beating teams that are not playoff teams. Now you're gonna yeah, you take know. on a play, a team with talent, with aspirations, with a Hall of Fame quarterback like your team. They look true, better. Yeah. They, they are operating their playbook a lot better in terms of throwing the ball down the field, you know, and stuff like, I mean, down the field, wide open yeah. offense, running an attack, balancement. You see a lot of that. They're doing it a little bit more efficiently. And I'm waiting to see the games where we flourish and have these games where we just started routing people offensively. And the reason why <laughs> we get not, but it's opportunities you get in the games where you'll be up by 10 and then all of a sudden you'll regress, and it's always around the third quarter. Man, I didn't study these people. Yeah, yeah. I didn't study right, these people. Yeah, I've even right. pinpointed to y'all and told y'all right. several dozen times on this show that the Saints stall out in the third quarter. I don't know what it is, but then I started studying the plays, and I said, I see what it is. And they have these third and short passes that right. then they'll do a weird play like a screen 
where they'll throw the ball 10 yards down the line of scrimmage to the wide receiver or to the tight end who's two yards behind the line of scrimmage to go forward to get a yard. Now, you tell me if that makes sense, but then people will say, yes, it does. Trust the Peyton. You know, and, and it's absolutely, <laughs> it's insane because, listen, good football, we not, we not going, I'm not going on Peyton's IQ. What I'm going on is the years and years of fundamental championship style football that I've witnessed teams win that don't change. It's a classic way, even though there's innovation in football, there is always a tried and true traditional way that always wins. And then That's people true. try to f- feister it up and throw this, that, and the third. But the bottom line is to win games more in the NFL, you have to do two things. You have to run the ball really well, and you have to stop the run. You got to. Q. You got to. That's, that's the that's fundamental. The meat and potatoes right there, you know. That's the meat and potatoes. That's absolutely right. You're right Q. You're run right, the ball, Q. stop the run. If you run the ball, that means you're chewing up time of possession, five, six, seven minutes, chunks of time of possession, off of the clock, stealing away possessions from your adversaries, literally taking plays away from them to the point where they have to throw out chunks of their playbook and hassen up to throw the ball because they were, I mean, you steal away their playbook right. simply by running the ball. But and, you know what, Keith? And then that gets you it's down the line further. Go ahead, right. Grandpa. Go ahead. But you know what, I don't mean to cut you off, but it just came to my mind. You know why Sean Payne really, really don't like to use the Taylor Murray like that? It's because he don't have that breakaway speed like Taysom Hill and an AK-41. He, he just like, he, he'll bust through the line, he just almost get there and he'll get tackled. If he had just a little more speed. But like you say, if he had, had more opportunities carrying the ball, we might well see that, too. But I think that's one of some Peyton pet peeves against Murray. He just don't have that breakaway speed. Right. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right, brother Paul. I knew it had to be substituted. Like you was giving an analogy there, and that just came to my mind. He don't like Murray because Murray ain't going to bust through there and go 60 yards for a touchdown. That's not Latavius Murray's strong point. Um, he yeah. like the old line. He had moved the pile. Two rushes, first down. First two down. Rushes. If they would do that cue, they would wear the defensive line out. Then they could throw to take them to your package, and then they could use AK-41. But, they, you know, like you say, Q, Sean Payton is like a petulant child. He just will not be disciplined to run the ball. It's like it bores him to run the ball. And that's stupid because, guess what, Bruce Harris, he's the ex-offensive coordinator, won Super Bowl up there in Pittsburgh with uh, Mike Tomlin. He's an offensive weird, too. He don't get a lot of credit. And now he the head coach, but he, but he had somebody call to play. But, you know, as a coach, you can overrule. But what I'm saying is, he ain't gonna be playing around with Sean Payton. He go use every play in the playbook, Q, and he go try to out. He, he probably go out coach Sean Payton because he more disciplined than Sean Payton is. Well, I mean, he he's been a lot more balanced this year, to be honest with you. The pressure's on Tampa Bay, unlike with the Saints, uh, because they're in Tampa. They have Tom Brady, who brings a lot of press. They had Gronkowski. They had it Brown. Mm-hmm. They have it's a lot of pressure on that team to do it, and they're, and, and they're pushing all of the chips to the table and saying, we're going all in on this thing. And they've put right. together a collection of talent upon the talent that they have there. Their defense is at a top five level, playing and moving right. around and everything, smothering fast, fun, looking defense, having fun, playing all over the field. The run, they're trying to get the running game together, you know, with, uh, with the you see right. guy, Robert Jones the third or whatever his name is. And you got right. and, and and then of course Finette's healthy again, so you're gonna see a dose of him. Right. You got Le, Le, McCoy, LaShawn McCoy, who they use in the third down package. Grunk is getting available and Grunk is uh picking up his production, they're getting him more involved in the game. So, like oh, I said, yeah. they're they're a talented team. And of course, we'll preview that entire uh game to, to, and preview that on our Friday show, like we traditionally do. But this is okay. a huge this is a huge mess mass up, matchup of effort proportions that the Saints have to take care of business. And their best offense, their best defense is their offense. They're gonna have to okay. eat that clock and we're gonna have to can't keep we can't stall out. We in turn and we yeah. listen, you ain't gonna beat this team with no damn field mm-hmm. goals. You're gonna have to score so some touchdowns. Let's see. You're right. And don't we be gotta score some touchdowns. Time to go to overtime. That ain't gonna happen like that. I'm, I'm trying you. to tell y'all, man. Listen, right. then then it's another element to throw in there is the referees. The referees love, nope. they love that guy. They love uh 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 Tom Brady. 
They 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 work to cheat them. You got to remember that too. That's why I'm also saying that we got to do a job and, and cut out the miscues, the undisciplined play. We have to convert field goals into touchdowns, and we have to beat this team uh, at least by two by two uh, 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 two uh, scores so that we could take the referees out of the equation. Because right. the the fix is in. Right. If the fix is in, I'm trying to tell y'all. I've been warning y'all. This is the game where you can't have no, you can't go in there doing dumbass screen plays behind the line of go. scrimmage. Screen alert, screen alert, scream alert, screen alert, screen alert, screen alert, screen. I'm trying to tell y'all. Screen alert, screen alert, screen alert, screen alert. I'm trying to tell y'all that stop the dumbass screens. You can't do that. You can't do that against Tampa Bay defense. Screen alert, screen alert. They, you can't do that against Tampa defense. You can't screen on the Tampa Bay defense. They fast sideline to sideline, so you're gonna have to right. run at them. So eliminate the screens and the and the Taysom Hill packages. It won't work. So you're gonna have to run the ball the old school way, especially with Drew Brees dealing with an injury with his shoulder, his right shoulder. Like the Ice Man said, he was surprised to see Drew on the injury report. That's news that he got it right, and they'll tell you, oh, it's nothing to it, really. His throwing shoulder. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah, cute. Oh yeah, that. If you don't run the ball, ball it, it's more serious with the tail. You know, Sean Payton lied about the injury report and the heartbeat. But yeah, you just certainly. I don't think Drew should throw the ball twenty five times. Like you said, do think, be thinking like you're playing against the Chargers. Run that ball thirty, forty times at least, thirty five to be exact. Bring them three tight ends out there, cute, because it ain't gonna make no kind of sense to have Drew throwing that with his arm hurting him like that. You gonna get him busted open. And, you know, like I said, the Tom Brady, the difference, they're going to be home and they're going to be trying to make a statement. But I guess what? They want Tom Brady to win. They want him to get that record, too. That's what a lot of people don't realize. I know. That's what I was saying. You can't, you cannot, and, and that's the thing I've been trying to tell people. Listen, you got, each game is a training game for you to hone your skills. The offense, it is now, it is week nine. We had a bye, but it's week nine, and the offense still is not what we anticipated to be. And it's about Q, we had injuries to Mike Thomas. Listen, let me tell you something. But it's got injuries me, too, Q. Right, that's what I'm saying. It's, still never played you, a full you, game. The, Offense, special team, defense. Still ain't seen that yet. You operate a wide, a, a, a wide receiver and QB friendly system. Uh, the last quarterback we're getting that had good success was Teddy Bridgewater. As, as conservative as Teddy right. was, he had success in there because the Saints were able to go with the right. Now, only thing I'm asking right. is, is Sean Cape people of baseball, uh, is he – Capable of doing that, Q. The reality, he is capable of doing that because he did it when Teddy Bridgewater was there those five games last year. He ran the ball in two of those games that didn't have Elvin Kamara. So he used a running attack and used Latavius Murray to run the ball and they had good time of possession and they were 5-0. and The defense was refreshed because, remember, if you don't run the ball and you go 3-0, and you put your defense up there. Tom Brady has a four or five-minute drive. That's hard on them. They get tired. So what ended up happening is, let's say they score a touchdown off that drive. Defense gets off the field. Offense gets back on the field. Offense goes down. They have a three to four minute, a three minute drive. They get off the field yeah. again. Defense back on it. You see how them minutes add up? It's the wrong. It's the right. wrong formula. And then on top of that, if you're gonna be, if you true to yourself and say, listen, Q, I just, I'm just gonna throw the damn ball. That's who I am. I'm gonna live and die by the pass. Okay, if that's who you are. Then what you need to do is commit extra spots to your defense. Take some of the spots off of the offense where you need an extra, like they'll have two or three active offensive linemen. Take one away. Take that goddamn fullback out of there. You don't need. You don't use him for nothing. He can't block on the special teams. I be watch. I watch the tape of that guy right. running down there. He can't even block for the kick returners and punt returners. He be missing blocks. What good is he? A fullback that can't block right. on special teams. I be. I'm watching you, bro. I see the tape. I watch right. the stuff that they don't watch. So, I mean, what good is having that guy? You might as well convert Dwayne Washington to a fullback or, or, go, or go fullback by committee. Have Adam Troutman, who's blocking anyway, have him block right. along with Josh Hill and then give that position to the defense. There's ways that we can right. do this. If you're going to stay true to form to who you are, give extra spots to the defense so that the defense can have an extra defensive lineman, the defense have, can have an extra uh, defensive back, so that did you, because you're going to stay true to who you are, 
create spots, extra spots for the defensive personnel if you know you're going to put them in situations where they have to be on the field a lot more than what they're supposed to is all I'm saying. They're, they get tired, and that's, that's how de defenses get burnt. That's common sense. But you can that, also help why, them by running the that, ball and, and keeping them off the field. Right. You know, as Chateau, he put on some way. He's slow as Christmas. And I've seen Sheldon Rankin hobbled off the field during the game. Is, is he going to be ready to play Q? Because we're going to need him up in there to stop no, the running game turn no, back. No, sir. I, I don't think he's going to be in there, Brother Paul. You can uh, see Malcolm no. Roach. Uh, so Malcolm Brown, Mel he beat Malcolm, up. So Mel well, Malcolm. Randall's going to have to come in there, Q. I well, can't think of nobody else. Well, I mean, they do have several other defensive linemen that well, on, that's on the practice squad, but we not, I don't see them well, pulling those guys off. They're going to rely on Roach. They're going to rely on Shuttle, the, uh, a shy Tuttle. They're going to rely on the guys, Malcolm Brown, and the rest of the guys to come in there and play. You're right, Girl Grandis is going to be called upon to make some no, more plays as well. Thought, so you call that part of did this out of the rotation during the game. Yeah. He ain't got enough people to rotate. That's gonna make the other guy have to stay out there, man. That, that's that's why, not gonna be good. But for that's what you know? that's what I was saying that you could have brought in a, a extra defensive, a, a veteran defensive lineman, somebody like a Cameron Wake who would work for work for the veteran minimum, who will come in and who you can use Cameron Wake as a defensive end and as an interior okay. lineman as well. They have value. You can get a guy like that for cheap and bring him in here so he can help out uh, when you get a little thin because you got Sheldon Rankins who. I don't think he'll be. He won't be able to play. We already in middle of the week that he's on shutdown. I don't think Sheldon yeah, plays yeah. this week. So, right. so, so as a result, uh, you, uh, throw you have Cam to Jordan that. that defensive tackle on some play. Q, yeah, like you said, they got to use imagination. It's just getting too vanilla and too bland. And teams is like Tampa Bay gonna eat our lunch. Mel Melanin God, thank you, Melanin God. He says that rank is out for three to four weeks. So yeah, that so oh, month, so he on. gone for about a month. Wow. So, you know, that, that oh, thanks for man. that information, bro. Uh, and big ups to the rest of the fat Pelicans. Nola, who that to your family? I see in the chat as well. Uh, big ups to you. Uh, who else? Uh, I think I gave uh, Money, Money Johnson a shout out as well. Big ups to you and the rest of the family members. And uh, Foxy says, thanks for the congrats, y'all, 100-100. All right, thank you, Foxy. She's going to sell that house. So big ups to Foxy. Always good to give That's love great. and credit to the great St. Thank Tank, man. When you shoot that positive energy to people and them prayers, just like we have the family members that had some issues and we say, you know what? We all going through it. We all had them hurricanes hit upon us, but we here standing strong. We still here praying for each other. We still here uplifting others. And that's what the great Saint Think Tank is about. We are family. And that's why people love it here because that's what, that's how we operate. So we congratulate, we give love to people that's making great moves and strides. And even people that might be struggling a bit that need a little love. Like we had Lane Johnson here not too long ago, and Lane was having some issues uh, from a relationship standpoint, and we was uplifting wow. him, giving him love and, and encouragement. Man, that's big, man. That's big. That's real big. But brother Paul, I'm gonna give you the last word on it, bro. Then we gonna go to 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 revolt. Uh, uh, yeah, I will, yeah, I want to give revolt. I didn't want to see his points on it, but you know what, Q? I can say I, I just you know have a feeling you know it's just you know I, I I'm I'm speaking. I'm picking Tampa Bay 37, Saints 27. That's what I think it's going to be. All right. All right. Brother Paul, 30, 27, Tampa. I believe Tampa Bay going to get us. Because uh, uh, the secondary, I mean, like I said, you're getting some champagne. I'm glad he got the new young linebacker. Thank you. But you know you still need another defensive back and another safety to tell the truth, Q. You know? And now you know Rankin's going to be out. You need to go find another liable. You know it, it, it just seems like Chappé wait till it gets bone dry before he wakes up. Oh, okay, then I need to fix this, but it's been a problem all the time. You know, you can't work out a corner all the time, Q. You got to be proactive instead of react. Right. You're absolutely but right. Thanks. You got Thank to. You know, proactive. That's my That's my thing. Listen, oh, yeah. you you going to take the car with the light first pop on, and you're going to wait. You're going to take it after six months of driving it with the light on. Right, right. With I the, mean, the red lights and all the, the bells and whistles telling you you need to go chain the oil. Okay, keep driving the car with no oil in. See right. how long it lasts. Yeah, they got some people that just, just that put a piece of tape on top of it. I don't want to see that. That's not how you deal with that, bro. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'll tell you. You can't shut up. You duct tape, can't fix everything. <laughs> And you think so? And then and then then Sway to say, Sway, Sway, you see Sean Payton putting putting tape on the on the on the lights on the dashboard? Trust the Payton. <laughs> Trust the no, baby. 
Trust the people. Trust the people. Like a goddamn bobblehead. Trust the people. Then you go down the street, the whole car fall apart. Okay, now you sitting on nothing but a frame. Go ahead. Yeah, trust the Peyton. <laughs> we rolling down the street looking like like Fred Flintstone. Trust the Peyton. <laughs> Pick it up and run with it. Yeah, that was Shell Peyton. <laughs> say we, I believe we could ride this better. Take all the wheels off and just pick it up and run with it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah we all Go lifting ahead, up, man. running with it, tripping and everything. <laughs> trust the Peyton. <laughs> You right, Q, but it, we, like I can say, but I can like say, just been getting by, but I think this is going to be the game we really going to get a wake up call because some people really need it. Like I can say, you still got the 49s and bikers down the street. If we could get through this little patch, Q, I'm like you, I believe we'd be better at the end of the year. I kind of wish we could have got these games at the end, but like I say, you got to play with the hand you've been dealt, you know? That's right. You, and, that's, and that was a point, great point, brother Paul, and I'm a, I'm a uh, that that's great. I'm going to go to uh, Revolt next. But that's absolutely yeah. – that's a great point because you look at the Saints' schedule beyond the Tampa Bay matchup. Family, listen. There – if the Saints can get wow. it – who, who that to you, Anthony? Anthony Connolly, who that to you, bro? I see you. Listen, if the Saints can get it together here and start running a balance attack and uh, and simply stop uh, the, the miscues and, and convert these field goals into touchdowns, bro, we have one winning team – on the schedule remaining as it stands we have the buccaneers who we play this upcoming weekend Mm -hmm. and then later on we'll play a 400 400 yeah the niners are 500 right now in about time in about time time we get to them they won't have jimmy garoppolo they don't have they don't have kittles yet minnesota is is losing too so you have so you have two you got two matches against Atlanta back to back, and you know how we play Atlanta. No, no, no matter right. how terrible Atlanta right. is, Be the careful. Saints always seem to one of those games play down to the level of the stinking right. ass Falcons. That for whatever reason yeah, they yeah, do that. Yeah, you're right. And then the cold part yeah, about yeah. it is they got the game situated where we play Atlanta twice in three weeks. So they, you know, and Atlanta yeah, gonna bring it. Like because, that. Well, see, that's 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 prime for yeah. what you could call yeah. a, 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 a knock you off game because they're gonna be that's primed true. up to win you because ain't no pressure on them to win now. You know, right. they already done fired the right. coach and the GM, so ain't no pressure. So they can play loose as they want to play. They can throw out the trick plays and everything. Nobody going to – that coach don't care. He a lame duck coach. He ain't going to get that job next year. You know that and I know that. Right. So, Just I mean – You're right. Right. So, you got two Atlanta matchups. You have a Ooh. Denver Bronco club who can be an upstart club. They, this, right. They're, they're a, a team that's not winning either. They have a losing record. Atlanta has a losing record. Carolina has a losing record. Minnesota has a losing right. record. And only team on there besides the the the, uh, the Buccaneers we play is Kansas City, who one of the best teams in the NFL right now. So you got Tampa yeah, Bay, man. Carol, you got Tampa Bay, Kansas City, and a 500 San Francisco club. Everybody else remaining on the schedule are sub 500 clubs. They went losing records. So if we can get this together, and we can cut the miscues and stop the dumbass plays we can be able to march to these teams and we can take it up a notch and really do what we intended to do, blow out teams by double digits and get that offense back like we supposed to. But that's a big if. That's a, yeah. But like I said, that's a bit between a, a, a Volkswagen Q and a Mercedes 300. I'm going to leave you with that. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Thank you, brother Paul. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. Who that yeah, time? Who that, man? Thank All you. Right. Peace. That's brother Paul chiming in. Revolt, what's up, baby? <clears throat> what up, Q? How you doing, my friend? Oh man, I'm all right, man. Shit. What's what's, <clears throat> what's on your mind, my brother? What's going on out there in ATL your way, bro? Don't tell me you. They should be. They ain't. I know they ain't betting you no more. I know they ain't betting. Uh, they probably trying to keep their money now. <laughs> 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 nah, man. I, I I couldn't get. I ain't made no money this, this so far. <laughs> get off. Well, we got a couple of games against them coming up. Hopefully, you got some yeah. pigeons. Got some pigeons over there willing to donate some money to 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 your charity over there. Yeah, well, you know, I I got the, I got those two already set in stone. Those they just roll over to the next year, you know. So, <laughs> <laughs> but my homeboy, he he wanted to cut the uh, dollar amount down. Oh, he so wanted. Went on he wanted- he wanted to chop the money down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He wanted to cut the dollar amount down. <laughs> <laughs> he shouldn't be gambling. He should know better than do it, period, man. Like, man, I ain't betting with this dude. This dude always take my money. 
I guess hey, Atlanta man. fans don't have no common sense, do they, Revolt? No, nah, they don't, man. Oh, but my goodness. I, yeah, man. I, you know, I, this Bucks game, man, I've been dreading this game for a couple weeks now, man, because um, their um, strength on offense is our weakness on defense, the passing game. And um, we've been giving up those big plays down the field, man. And um, I just don't have a good feeling. When they sign Antonio Brown, I was oh, oh, no. And I think the the best chance we have is to be in attack mode. And Dennis Allen is not an attack mode type of um defensive coordinator. Nope. So I, 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 he want to sit back and rush four and drop um seven and I don't think that's I don't that it doesn't that doesn't work you know where well, it hasn't been working um you know giving up third and third and fifteen and fourth and eight and I don't I don't I, I don't get it man and these players look like they're regressing instead of progressing um. Lattimore getting beat off the line of scrimmage. I, I, you know, I was paying attention to him the last couple of games, and he is getting beat right off the line of scrimmage, man. He, he, he's not. I don't know. You know, he's in his fourth year, and he looked like he still got the same body type that he had when he uh, was a rookie. He don't look like he's built any muscle and gotten stronger. And you know, he's just getting. When did we did he play in that San Diego game? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And Mike Mike um Mike Williams was beating him off the line of scrimmage. Um just last week when he gave up that touchdown, he that, he was beat, bro, by the time Robinson took two steps, it was over for him. It was over. And I paid attention to him. He he's not good at the line of scrimmage. He I don't playing bump and run, he needs to be off the ball, man. He he is not good. Um, you know, playing bump and run, and um, Anzalone hasn't shown up on in a, in play in any plays. He's just like he's just out there, man. Just just going through the motions or whatever. And um, I heard a stat about him that he he blitzed twenty seven times this year and hasn't gotten any pressures or any sacks. And he blitz they blitzed him twenty seven times. That's incredible. He hasn't even gotten a pressure. Damn. Off off his blitz, um, Q. Damn. Twenty seven times. That's amazing, bro. That That's many amazing. times. That many times and no pressure. And, and not even a pressure. Damn. Not, not didn't knock the quarterback down. Didn't get a pressure and, Damn. and didn't get a So, um, I'm not that familiar with him and Alexander outside of um when he played at LSU. I remember him a little bit when he, you know, when he was with the um, Buccaneers, man. But I hope, um, I hope that's the answer. Cause, um, but he's not playing this week. I don't think. I think Peyton said he probably wasn't going to be ready no. to play the next week, and that's when he put we play what San Francisco. I think we got the next. Well, next week, next week. So, in San Francisco, hurting pretty bad. You know, pretty bad. Out. Yep. Yeah, kill Gar- out. Garoppolo. The back, um, Yep, Mosa, Mosa, is Mo, out. Yep, they hurt pretty bad. And Bosa so. is he gone. He's out too, ain't he? No, nah, he playing. He I playing? Like, okay. I think he is playing. Uh, yeah, he playing. Because he just had okay. he just mentioned something about him modeling his game after Devontae Parker. Not Parker, uh, Devontae Adams, uh, the Green Bay uh-huh. Packer wide receiver. He wanted to model his game after him. So, I think he is a, he is playing. Yeah, okay. Well, this um, – um, Tampa, this going to be, let me tell you, this is going to have to be a game where they put together a real, real tight game plan on both sides of the ball, both sides of the ball. They're going to have to do something that they don't normally do. And you know, that's not our MO. We usually go into the game doing the same shit. Everybody know what we do and you know, <laughs> so because, um, you know, the, it's just they 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 got to get pressure on Brady. If they don't get any pressure on him, it's gonna be a long day. Cause I'm look I looked at a little bit of the Giants game, and the Giants was getting to him. You know he they, he was really off. He mm-hmm. was really off. Yeah. And uh, their 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 um 
line is not that great. It's still not that good. They look they look a little better run blocking, but pass blocking they still a work in progress. Yeah, yeah, they still work in progress. So, but Dennis Allen, man, that I don't know what to say. He 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 just he doesn't like the attack. He's not going to attack, nah, man. He, he, he trying he to do what Spagnola play. doing, bro, which is get pressure uh-huh, right. get pressure with the four, drop everybody in the coverage, safety's right. high. You can't get no more conservative yeah. than that. If we had the rushes, they had that year of Pierre Paul, uh, Mike Graham, mm-hmm. Justin Tuck. I mean, we can do that. OCU Mignon, right. we can do that. Right. Shit, man. We, that's, I mean, we got a solid um, D-line, but, you know, that that was one of the best uh, D lines in you know in the NFL at the time. Yep. But I think we're going to need some special team help. We're going to have to do something on special teams. We're going to have to get some. We got to get. Some, we need at least two turnovers, and um, and we need to run it. two rushes first down. We need to get that going. And um, I think that's the recipe. Keep them off the field to help the defense run the damn ball. Um, at least, I mean, if I can get 25, I'm just hoping for 25 at this point. If we can get 25 rushes, we'll be doing all right. 30, I mean, that's wishful thinking, but, you know, 25 maybe, hopefully. But if he come out throwing it, we're in trouble. <laughs> if he come out throwing it, we are in trouble, bro. If we put, if we going three and out, three and out, three and out, we in trouble. Cause them boys gonna eventually, they gonna get um somebody going I don't is Godwin gonna play this? Um, uh, I don't, week? I don't think so. I don't think he does play this. I know AB plays. I think God when they were supposed to figure that out, um, this week he got a cast on his on his finger. So I don't, I don't think he plays, bro. If it's up to me, I don't think they play him. Scotty Miller's doing mm-hmm. pretty decent for him in the slot. AB's going to be there, so I say no to Godwin. Shit. I think I prefer Godwin. Um, I mean, I prefer AB over Godwin, man, because um, Godwin be killing me. Yeah, he does. AB he... breath for AB. He hasn't played in over oh, over a year, so he's going to have to get his game. He got to get his legs up burning him anyway. But, you know, he a vet, so that might not take him too long. But <clears throat> I yep. think um, – yep. Godwin is the Saints killer. You right, Revolt. You right, Revolt. Godwin is the Saint killer because Marshawn does a pretty good job on Evans, and mm-hmm. God and Godwin is the one that be killing that, that usually kills the Saints. You right. Well, but, um, it's just gonna be about pressure, man. If um Dennis Allen <laughs> get out of those vanilla um um bitches that he does, and everybody can see who's coming and we know where they're coming from. And, right. I mean, you, I mean, why don't you try some overloading, bro? Something, some man. Line, some line <laughs> shifting. I mean, it's a way to like, blitz, you know what I'm saying? His blitz is getting, yeah. his blitz is getting ate up, bro. He's straight up blitzing, like, you know, and, you know, like, I'm saying, like, it's not, it's not like, it's not hard. It just take imagination. You know, and I mm-hmm. appreciate the family members saying Q should be the GM. You keep, I, I, listen, bro, I know football. You know, I know football. I, I know football. And I know what I've studied over the years of watching football as long as i watch watched football. And I know what works. And I know mm-hmm. that if you watch the great defenses of the past, they have imaginative coordinators, guys that right. know how to get their players and put their players in position to make successful plays. For instance, mm-hmm. the Saints, like how often did we talk about the Saints using uh, the ability to move around talent to create mismatches. Instead of Cam be on the left, have him shift and go on the right. Have the ends to switch. You mm-hmm. know, move Cam around. Situate Cam. If he's your best defensive player, situate Cam to a mismatch every time as opposed to keep him primarily on that side and have him rushing against that same guy. Let's switch this up. That's moving right. along the field. Let's shift the mm-hmm. line and, and overload one side of, this, of, the, uh, of their offensive line and let's just get creative with this blitz. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm just saying because they did a good job week one when they were able to smother the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offense and really crush uh, Tom Brady by getting pressure up his face. He's the same as Drew Brees. Brees or Brady does not like pressure up the center of the line because they can't move. 
Those guys can't, they can only shift, but they can't, or slide. They cannot move. So when you get pressure up the center of the line, that, that's no way, it's no place for them to go with the ball. They'll, and you see Tom Brady will throw the ball downfield in an attempt to get rid of it to try to force a play, which can ultimately give lead to a turnover. So mm -hmm. we got to be able to do that. We got to do, we got to be able to bring that pressure back. We got to be able to be creative with our packages. And and like I said, a lot of the, the give the plays that we gave up wouldn't have happened if we'd have kept the safeties up high. You know what I'm right. saying? I mean, don't I mean you okay, the tight the tight end is killing you. You know, you you just gonna have to give that, you know, back that up. But as long as you ain't you ain't if it's quick strikes, that's demoralizing. If they're right. dunking and dunking the ball up the field alone, the more possessions you make them take as an offense is an opportunity for you to create a turnover. So if you right. if there's a, a deep strike down the field and the guy marches his ass into the touchdown, ain't nothing, there's nothing you can do with that. The, the guy made a touchdown. That's the end of the drive. Get your ass off the field. But if you mm -hmm. can keep them on the field, it helps every opportunity to be able to get a turnover, an interception, a sack fumble, a strip, or something positive for the defense. So we just right. have to think about that. I don't want to give up. If I got to keep two safeties high to, pre to prevent the deep pass, and keep everything out in front of me because my defense is that bad, then I will settle for that as opposed to letting you tear me up throwing the ball over the top of my head. Absolutely not. You gonna, If you're going to beat me that way, if you're going to beat me in, in either or, I'm going to say I, 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 let's break out the methodics. You're going to have to methodically march the ball up the field. Would you give me an opportunity to pick that goddamn ball off, Davenport get around the edge and blow up Tom Brady, or your mother to bust through and knock him on his ass, creating a fumble, you know, either way like that, and then tell the Saints to converge on the ball when they throw the ball. So if the tight end catches the ball there, everybody converge to the tight end and gang tackle them. If you can hold them up and strip it, that's another method that we were using last year when guys will rally to the football, Right. Pull the yeah. guy and up and pull the ball. Somebody out. come and strip it out. Yeah, that's right. And we yeah, were doing it. You seen like um, what's my dude name that left? Um, Von Bell. Von Bell. That was his specialty. Like, right. Right. You're running yep. there like a little raccoon and pull the ball out of there. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's it's that's what we have to we have to go back to that. It's like, well, how do we do that? We we got to keep everything in front of us, and then of course we'll get better with the defense. Well, this, but we but but that's a part of it. This um that third down defense man is is horrible man I I look I think me and you around the same age you I've been watching this thing I've never seen a third down defense even when we were bad I haven't seen a third down defense like we have right now last yeah, week they completed a third and fifteen man. Yes, indeed. Third and fifteen. I couldn't, and then they came back and, and completed a fourth and eight. I said, "What kind of defense? What is he calling?" The dude, look, the dude ran a like a down and out. I don't know what they call it in the pros, but he ran an out route, and the, nobody showed up until he got to the sticks, and he caught it and got tackled. And I'm like, what, what defense is that? Wasn't that the same play when it was 10 yards off of him when he caught that out route? Bro, they had to be 10 yards off they of him. They were off him by 10 yards. When he caught the ball, he caught the ball at the sticks. And it was a third and 15. He caught the ball at the sticks, and here come Lattimore tackling him. I'm like, what, what kind of defense is that? What, what, what is that call? What's the, what's the formation? I mean, I'm like, and then it came back and did a Fourth and eight. I said, dude, somebody got to go. Somebody got to get fired. Some, something got to happen. You can't give up a third and 15 and then come back and give up a fourth and eight. And that's routine. Man, we horrible at getting off the field. And it's two years in a row. Two years in a row. Now, that's why people don't, you know, we even when we win, we still kind of, you know, reluctant to be, um, excited about the win because you, I mean, you see too many holes. You right. see the hole. You, you ain't going far in the playoffs giving up fourth and eight and third and 15. And there you go. You and, and, and revolt, there you go. That you, you are bright as rainwater, bro. And that's some of the stuff I ain't trying to shout on nobody's optimism. But that's, that's real, right. that's realism right there. And that's why I was saying the, the good teams will not let you win that way. 
So even no though way. I'm happy for the win, they will not let you beat them that way because the Bears imploded. They imploded right. and we couldn't take advantage of them to put them out of their misery. And we allowed them back into the game and we barely won by a field goal. The two teams mm -hmm. prior were both teams that are nine playoff teams and you're barely winning those games. The issue is like you can win games with field goals, don't get me wrong, but are you are you are you learning anything as we moving forward? Meaning, is you, do you see improvement uh, in, in a drastic way? Because, listen, this is a veteran defense. The only thing changed about this defense is the addition of Malcolm Jenkins. That's the only other dude. Everybody else is a year more experienced in Dennis mm -hmm. Allen's system. If you look at this, mm -hmm. the, the only difference on the defense, that, that everybody's pretty much the same. Jenkins, I mean, uh, Davenport's the same. Cam, all of the, deep, the, the linemen, except for the guy like Malcolm Roach, who Sheldon Lee plays, but everybody else – is a year more experience, including the two cornerbacks, which are both mm -hmm. Laddie Daddy and Jack Rabbit and Marcus Williams. The only person new to the Saints defense is Malcolm Jenkins. So this defense shouldn't be as bad as it is, especially in the red zone when they're one of the worst, if not the worst team in the NFL, in the red zone where you get down there and it can almost just, you know what, here, just take the, here you go, six points, take it. Right, right. <laughs> You know, I mean, that, what can I? I mean, that that's just a joke. If you if you're trying to compete for a Super Bowls, you can't have the worst red zone defense in the NFL. That won't happen. Mm -hmm. That ain't working. Super Bowl, Hugh. That's not even the first round of the playoff team that 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 I see. So I mean, off, I'm not really worried about the offense. The offense, I think, is is um moving pretty good. But I think in some, I I I, I don't I don't understand. And you know, I called you, I think we was going, I think that's week two, <laughs> we were going out to Vegas. And I said, <laughs> Q, you probably don't remember, because I know you take a lot, you know, you deal with a lot of people, but I said, Q, we have to stop this Taysom Hill package. We got to get rid of that. It never works. And the dude is still doing it. <laughs> and I told my wife, I said, you know what? He has to be setting something up. He's saving. He's setting something up for the year for for the right time and the right game, because he can't be that stupid. <laughs> I, I, I'm giving him. I'm giving him credit. Q. I'm. I'm. He's a coach. He. He's in the NFL. I'm not. He's got to be setting something up, and we all gonna see when it happens. We gonna know, because this Taysom Hill shit. <laughs> the dude is. He just won't give up on it. He was not going to give up on that Taysom Hill package, man. I know they're paying him what twelve million dollars this year. Uh, but, eight, sixteen million for two years, eight, eight a million, eight, eight a year. What is it? Eight? Okay, okay. Oh shit! I guess that's why he won't give up on it. I don't know, but I've been, I've been dying for that package to, to for him to stop, and he does it. Notice when he hit like the twenty. 25 yard line, here, here come. come. Yep. <laughs> here it come. And I said, no, no, no. No, man, we had a no. rhythm. No. He, he no. They come pay for I'm like, oh, shit, man, I can't. I called the cops. But hey, I don't know, man. That's, I'm just a fan, man. That's it. I'm just a fan. Yeah. I'm just looking for them. If yeah. I can see this shit, I know they got to be able to see it, man. The man is setting something up. I'm telling you, Q. We all. <laughs> he setting something happens, up for the rest of the year. Gonna... <laughs> Look, Revolt, happens, did you hear what Sway he said? That's what Revolt was talking about. But you heard what Sway <laughs> said. He keep with kind. Of, I guess he kind of saying what you saying, Revolt, because he said, "Listen, <laughs> bro. Listen, bro. You gotta trust the pain." And he said, he hey, said, man. I said, well, when he gonna throw the ball, Sway? Well, listen, he's setting it up. I said, bro, it's half the year gone. <laughs> <laughs> After you're gone, hey, Sway, bro. what you talking about? Where you go? It's coming. Watch. Like, what? Man, is you crazy? Bro. What you talking about? You going to do all that? You going to run 30 times and throw one pass? That is, <laughs> come on, bro. But that's asinine, man. Cut that out. Yeah, bro, I'm telling you, when it happens, you're going to say, damn, that's what Revolver talking about, right? Though. Everybody going to see it. Because, man, that 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 chase of hell pig is just killing us, man. And just uh, even, I heard, I think it was, um, I think it was Troy Eight, maybe it may have been one of them guys. He said, Man, I don't know why you take your um your Hall of Fame quarterback out the game, you know, when you got a rhythm at the twenty yard line. And every time Peyton kept doing it. So, I mean, I'm just at the point now where I'm 
I'm kind of immune to it. Now when I see it, it's just like, oh, fuck, here we go. Here we go. So I'm just hoping here he really is trying to set something up, man. But <clears throat> One could hope, bro. He damn sure ain't have nothing set up. Only only thing he set up last year was us for a big-ass <laughs> fall off the, off the clip because – when we was, we was anticipating the playoff, uh, coming to the playoffs and run the ball more, and we got more of the same. We didn't see, right, right. We, yeah. see, we didn't see any of the packages that that you saved for the playoffs because at least you would practice those in the regular season, which you can then use them, uh, even though if you run them one or two times where people wouldn't notice what you're doing, and then you open that up. But I think the, the package they need to be working on to surprise a lot of people, if that's the case, is run the ball, man. That's all we're saying, and that's always been the case. Is run the ball and makes everybody better. And you have a back that can run the ball in the Tavis Murray. Elvin Kamara mm-hmm. dealing with a foot issue. Drew Brees is on the injury list with a throwing shoulder, his throwing shoulder in a limited capacity. And you keep giving these little life indicators, these, these little life epiphanies that you, you keep getting uh, ideas of why you should run the ball. The Chicago Bear matchup should have been a 40 uh, a run game. We should have towed their ass up for at least 150 to 180 yards, almost 200 yards, because they couldn't stop the run. It was 30 miles per hour <laughs> flinging around there, three of your four wide receivers missing, but you still managed to put up 41 pass attempts. Say, well, Q, what's the problem? We won. We won. Q, we won. We won. I get you on that and understand, and I am <laughs> joyous for that. But at the end of the day, I'm looking at the other teams that you got to go through to get to the, tra- the championship game. So I'm expecting you to be uh, – uh, People like the Chargers or the Panthers or the Falcons, the Broncos, the Vikings, and people like that. But the true t- playoff teams that you got to match up with, the teams that you, you'll see, the Green Bays, you'll see them. You'll see the uh, the Seattle Seahawks. You'll see them in there. You'll see some of the difficult, tough NFC teams there. You got a tough Arizona club. Could you beat them? Could you rattle the, get that little quarterback down who's moving all around the field? That dude is all – so, I mean, that's what I'm saying. You got a lot of tough – uh, uh, teams that you have to stare in the face and they don't make dumb decisions, dumb, dumb mistakes like these other teams that you barely beat. Mm-hmm. These teams, right. was, these teams got the killer instinct and they'll put you in the ground. I'm telling you, but man, can you, can you see the Saints in, in, um, what, is, what stadium is that up there in Seattle in the playoffs? <laughs> oh my God. You got to run the ball. Getting up third, getting up third and 15 and four, four and eight. Man, Russell Wilson would have the same tip, man. Man, well, the, look. You, you got to have, and the thing is, the pass rush is imperative. You got to have, the deep right. playoff run means you got to get to the quarterback. So you got to have the pass mm-hmm. rush. You can't make mm-hmm. a lot of mistakes. I'm not saying you have to be perfect, but you cannot make a lot of mistakes. You can't beat yourself. That's, that's man, number one. Why, why he's not putting, um, and maybe I'm missing it, but. I don't see Hendrickson and um, Davenport on the field at the same time with the, Cam Jordan. They use he use, he was using the NASCAR package. He okay. used, they got good. They had a lot of success with that package against Chicago. They did okay. Yeah. Man. They had you know, five I, sacks last game against Chicago. They had a lot of pack. I, they, I, they, they, yeah, they had a lot of success with that package against Shot Town. The offensive line was horrible. Man, but look, all I'm saying is. It's got to. It's got to be. I, I really can't get a gauge on Dennis Allen. He don't have an identity. You know, there's nothing that we do on defense well to where you know you can depend on it, and that's your identity as a defense. It's, it's like every play he's guessing. Like, hmm, let me see. I'm gonna try this. See if it works. You know, it's oh. it's, it's look like he's guessing or just you know, um, you know, just trying to um, hope for the best because, you know, there's no really, there's no identity. There's no, um, when you look at the one-on-one matchups, you might get Davenport. I saw him, he was, um, you know, he was playing pretty good, but I, I, I couldn't get a gauge on anybody that was in there. Maybe on your model that was consistently winning the um, one-on-one battle. And that's the time. I mean, when I'm, when I'm looking at a game, I'm looking at who's winning one-on-one. I don't care about schemes. If you got players, if you got, if you on defense, if you have two or three players that can consistently win their one on ones, I mean, you could scheme anything. You could you could use any scheme you want. If you got players, at least two or three players that can win one on one, you could you could put any scheme you want to run and it'll work because you one on one battles is where it all 
<clears throat> with everything you know, goes through, man. Right. And if your guys it went one on one, you can scheme whatever the hell you want to scheme. Mm-hmm. And sooner or later, the quarterback gonna figure it out, and that's gonna be your ass. So the, we we not winning. Even Cam, I mean, he 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 did a beautiful move on Sunday. I think it was a spin move or well, a move he went out, cut in, and got that sack. It was a beautiful move, but he hasn't really been winning one on one this year a lot. You know, especially in the passing game. But we we this weekend they got to win, man. They got to win one on one. Lattimore got to he got to get his shit together, man. And I don't even want to talk about Marcus Williams, but I mean that's I'm I'm not too worried about the offense, just the defense, man. If we can keep them boys off the field or get to Brady, something one of the one of the two, something got to happen because um we give up. Big plays, big plays, killers, kills us. I don't know what the stat is on it, but I guarantee if you look at going drives and when we give up big plays, all that shit will coincide with each other. But, you know, I, I'm looking at I think we're probably giving up. I haven't looked at it, but I can guarantee we're giving up at least 25, 26 points a game on defense. Somewhere up in there. And five and two, boy, that, that's, that's, you, you, that's, what luck? Then we went two games, two overtime games this year. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Luck, <laughs> luck. That's luck, man. That's what I'm calling the Q. Fuck it. It's luck. We got lucky. We're lucky to be five and two. I said. So I'm out of here, man. It's my bedtime, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Revolt. Thank yeah, you, go, bro. I go to bed at nine o'clock, man. Yeah, I gotta get up. I get up early. Y'all be cool. Who that fam? I'm out, bro. Who that, bro? Who that, bro? Peace. Uh, That's Revolt Uh, man chiming in. Big ups to Revolt. All right, fam. Thank you for chiming on the line, bro. Uh, hold on here. Hold on here. I think I might have clicked the family. I clicked off family member. My bad. I just I had another family member on the line. I made a mistake and clicked both of them guys off. You can feel free to call up, fam. Uh, whoever I clicked off. The live line's open. I'll take one more call. Family, I clicked y'all, but call back. I'll get you on. All right, I, I made a mistake. There we go. All right, family, I'm sorry about clicking y'all, fam. Uh, uh, who's on Who's on the line? It's our Gunda, brother. How you doing, brother? Hey, Gunda, how you doing, my friend? How you feeling? <laughs> good, man, good, man. Uh, I don't did know. I, like, did I cut, did I cut No, bro, did I cut yeah. you off? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, okay. No, no, no worries, man. No, no worries. I apologize. Go, the floor's yours, bro. How you doing? Good. Uh, look, brother. Um, I, I I just want to say I think we're gonna be all right for for Tampa, and this is why I say this. Um, we didn't have Davenport last last game that we played the Bucks, then, right? Uh, no, we didn't. I think if we can get that surge up the middle, because Brady doesn't like to be touched, because he's a pretty boy. Knock him off of his. Uh, his center, get him uncomfortable. It's gonna be a long night for for, for the Bucks. Yep. Because it's something that that I'm seeing, and I know that you review tape a lot. I don't know if you saw this, but it, it was real subtle. I think Dennis Allen called up something, and it was just a weak uh, play call scheme. Sean Payton was pissed, <laughs> and he kind of snapped mm-hmm. that. I, I I don't mm-hmm. know if you uh, saw that. But 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 I think it was like in in the latter part of the game, and I think that that what's happening is people are starting to be called into accountability. Because mm. you look at this uh, kid that they draft, or not not drafted, that they picked up from San Francisco, mm. and it's something that you said on one of your shows, <laughs> Anzalone, you're gonna either play, or are you out of there? Yep. I I think that uh, because one of the problems now I don't know. Again, I know I say this a lot, and you're probably sick and tired of hearing it. You're the the, uh, the X's and O's and scheme guy. But when it comes to your linebackers, he has to have that speed in order to cover these tight ends. Yes, sir. And he's, and he's, and he's not doing it. Uh, you know, my my only concerns is, and, and this is something that's, like, that's ticky-tacky, a- after the game, what, was, was these guys celebrating in, in the locker room? Yes, sir. Why? Because they won. Why? 
Yeah, I, I mean, and I, and I get that. You got to be, you know, and I'm I'm just saying, you know, it's like, I, uh, it, okay, you Gundam, will- you asked me the question. I'm because Sway saying, oh, 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 you know, and it's like, I, I, because I'm 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 gonna use Sway as the poster child for the rest of the Who Dead Nation. <laughs> that thinks like that. So y'all say, man, ain't nobody think like that. I just introduced y'all know who it is. It's Sway. He's the poster child for people. It's like, what? What's wrong with them celebrating? Right. Oh, okay. Got it. I'm tracking. <laughs> Why are you celebrating? You know, because I I really believe if you look in, in something that, that you guys were discussing earlier, San Francisco's beat up, got a, got a lot of other teams that are having their issues. Right. Even if we lose, I still feel good about my Saints. Mm-hmm. If we can correct some stuff, um, one of the things that I hate, now, now when I say this, don't give me. I love the show. I'm a long time listener. When you do your keys to the game, mm-hmm. when you do your keys to, to the game, I mean, from what I'm seeing, and again, I'm not the algorithm, algebraic guy, the the ratio numbers, the guy. You've been spot on, and I'm like, damn. When I'm watching the game, the actual game, I'm like, fuck, man, why, why? I said, Big Q said that. This is all we need to do. If 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 we do the run. And utilize what we see. I don't know why we don't utilize our other r- r- running backs like San Francisco. They, San Francisco do an excellent job of, of utilizing three. I think it's like like three running backs. Mm-hmm. You know where where they call up different packages because we're wearing down Camara. Uh, I mean, yeah, he can only do so much. A great running back. I mean, phenomenal talent. I I, I would think that he's a generational talent. Mm-hmm. But we're. I think that that we can make a deep run because you look at these other teams, the pressure is going to be on Brady. Mm-hmm. The pressure is going to be on the Bucks yep. because they're not even seeing the the, the Saints coming. Because I'm looking at all the analysts and what they're saying, we're not even in the top of you know that we may get like a bone thrown to us like like once in a while, but it's not like everybody's on Brady. Everybody, you know, everybody's yep. talking about Antonio Brown. Okay, watch the front. Now, I'm not wishing anything because I think everybody should have a second chance. But I think that egos could play a big part in the latter part of this season when it comes down to you. Now, I, I do get that we don't the, – the only concerns that I got for us is we don't have that killer mentality when it comes to playoff time. Yep. You know, we're, we're, we're too – it's like passive, cautious – and and we're not. Uh, I, I think with this move with, with this kid from uh, San Francisco, uh, I like him if yeah. he can stay healthy. Right uh, now, now, now I don't know because you would know more about this. Like to me, he seems kind of small, six one, two twenty seven. What, what do you think about that, Big Q? Uh, he like he reminds me of Thomas Davis, Gundam. You know, you remember Thomas Davis from Carolina, the linebacker yeah. Thomas Davis that's right. what that's what his game reminds me of when I watch him play cuz I I watch him play at LSU and he he has like safety speed but he's a hitter like a mean he can hit as well but he gotcha. but he's he but he reminds me his game reminds me of I say a poor man's uh Thomas Davis because he can he can cover the tight ends he can even cover some running backs out the backfield the guy is a hitter he's smart he, and he's a, a, a very uh, energetic and passionate guy that, that you love to be around. So he's a, he's a talent, man. And he put he has he was originally taken by the Buccaneers and he has success in the Buccaneers defense, which led to him getting that fifty four million dollar contract with the San Francisco 49ers. And then, of course, right. he, after he got the money, he got hurt. And then the 49ers were looking to all, offload the contract. Because they had guys like Dre, with Dre Greenlaw and the rest of them guys who had upside and were a lot cheaper, so the Saints took them took them you know on it. But the positive of it is the Saints traded for him, and the money that they owe him this year is just over five hundred thousand dollars according to his contract. It do it then jumps to twelve point six or so, twelve point five or six, whatever it is next year, and then the following year. So of course the Saints will have to restructure that. But it okay. does. But if they keep him, that does put him on the same line uh, with Demario Davis and makes him the money linebacker. And so you have two coverage linebackers that never have to leave the field. So, well, I like his style. Oh, of go, play. go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I'm, that, I'm sorry. That was go it. ahead. That was it, bro. Uh, the 
it was after the draft. I remember you were giving your uh, uh, your your profile on different athletes, and you told us to to look out for this kid Callaway. You said keep an eye on this kid. You if you get that with that that linebacker, and I'm and I'm talking playoffs, you know, regularly because I know that we're gonna make the playoffs. You got the Mario Davis. You you got the kid Alexander. You've got our front seven or whatever you want to call it. You've got our receiving core. Then I, I know that Rankins is out. I think it's a knee or some type of MCL. But you but you're giving the uh, kid Malcolm Roach more experience. I think I think we could make a deep run in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I, I really do. But Again, you know, it, it's up to Sean Payton. You know, I don't want to get into too much of the arrogance because it is what it is because he's going to do what he's going to do. But if he can just adjust and see it, it's right there, it's right there for us to, to make this deep run because we have the, uh, the uh, talent because I'm starting to see – I mean, I, even though I know it's the Chicago Bears, our secondary did kind of sort of tighten up. Now, I know that we're still giving up big, big plays, you know, once in a while. But I think this game, because everybody's, you know, I think the Bucks are too cocky. I think if we go in there, if Cameron Jordan, Davenport show up, if they can get that surge up the middle, it's going to be a long night for the Bucks. Yep. You know, I, I, don't, I don't see them – uh, dominating the Saints if the Saints go in there with the top type of mentality because every game that Lattimore has played against uh, who who's that guy the wide receiver that they always fight because Lattimore doesn't like him Mike Evans uh, what is that Evans if if he can have that type of game shut him down and if we make it close we'll we'll send a message because I I really believe that that Brady he's the type of uh, a subtle narcissistic type of quarterback where once he gets start getting hit, rushes, he starts getting on his teammates. Yep. Cussing at him, and, slamming and, the ball on all that. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> all right. So you so you see that. Oh yeah. You know, and and, and I'm just hoping that, you know, uh with with your the only thing that I'm concerned about is this has nothing to do with, with the with the game per se, is that when you come out with your keys to the game, <sighs> so far you've been I would say about 98, 95 to 98% spot on, you know, and, and that's what I'm concerned about because, well, don't thank me because I'm like, sometimes I'm like, oh God, keys to the game. So I'm stressing this because when I, because when I do watch the actual game, I say, okay, they didn't do that. This is why we're getting our butts kicked, you know? So that's the only thing that I'm concerned about because when are you going to probably, I'm probably dropping ahead, come up with your keys to the game. Is that going to be on Saturday? Friday usually uh every Friday is we do the uh the previews uh where we open up right. the phone lines and uh we, we we go into the depth charts the statistics the injury reports uh interviews leading into that weekend so yeah usually Friday is the uh preview show well I tell you what if you ever decide that you're gonna go to Vegas take me along with you because I'll be a millionaire <laughs> Because I don't know if, if, if you got an uh, algorithm for algebraic equations or whatever, but I know one thing, you're a numbers guy. You know, and, and I'm just, and if you look at it, everything that that was said, like so far as keys to the game, they could be blowing teams out. But, you know, you coming up with this dink and dunk, taste and heel package that everybody knows. Now, I understand that, that there, was a, there was a couple of times for the Bears game, you know, he got good yardage. But it just seems like, man, it's like if the fans know it, if the analysts know it, then the other teams are going to know it. It's like when Taysen, uh, he was in the shotgun. It's like he, he doesn't have the, how, how, how can I say it, like, like the multitask to, okay, you know what, I see something down the field, let me throw it. It's like every time he's going to run. Yep. So, so what they do, they bunch up, they they stack it up. You know, sometimes he may get a gain, and sometimes not. You know, if, and if that if that happens for the Bucks game, you know, it could be a long night for us. And I, I just think that what we have so far as with our receiving core, if if uh, Michael Thomas is back, I know Emmanuel Sanders, he's he's off of COVID protocol. Uh, who's the other kid, Callaway? Mm-hmm. Uh, if we can make more threats. 
make them play, and then, then you got Kamara. Then you've got the tight end. And I still think, and I'm always going to harp on this, they don't use Trotman enough. You know, if you've got aggressive linebackers, <laughs> that you know, that's what I noticed uh, for the Bears game. But I, but, but they did use. I think uh, Alva Kamara. He kind of like did a out and then an end down the down the field down the middle of the field where he had that big gain. I think for like forty one or thirty one yards. Yeah. The middle of the field is open if if you're gonna have those aggressive linebackers coming up. Now I understand that that they can go from side to side and they got great speed. You know, if he can use their speed against them. So next time, okay, you guys want to overcommit. You've got all your options. You've you've got capable wide receivers. You've got capable run, running backs. And of course, you know I do agree. Not using the the running game, but what's that going to do? Is uh, is it's going to wear down our people for our playoff time? You know, so that's that's pretty much all I got. I and I just want to say, you know, great show. Uh, I, I really enjoy it and you and you're spot on with with a lot of your analysts. I think that. Some of the Saints personnel probably listening to the show because I saw some of justice for this Bears game, man. Bro, I mean, it's, it's, I appreciate it, Gundam. Thank you for uh, your support, bro, and your, your positive words, bro. And I agree with you, bro. I think a lot of what's going on, bro, uh, with the team is just start, and, and that's why you say, well, Q, why you, why you hit Peyton so hard? Because it's this, it's, 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 it's pure egoism. Why you're not a, a adhering to a basic fundamental and positive championship style football principles. That's what it comes down to. It is pure egoism. He does not want to win. He wants to win in his own way to the chagrin of that, of that traditional football uh, standpoint. And when you're a struggling team, all of the people know when you're struggling to get things and to move the ball, you're supposed to go back to basics. The basics are blocking and running the ball and playing to stop the run. That is the basic hallmark when you're a struggling team. It's what Cleveland did. That's how Cleveland started gathering success. We covered it on like the uh, TSC Unleashed show. We talked about Cleveland, how they lost. And then all of a sudden they reared off that <clears throat> their winning streak. Is because I said they need to focus on running the ball. They have two really good runners. They need to rely on those and take the ball out of Baker Mayfield's hands and use the running attack. When they did that and took it out of his hands because he's prone to throw, throw the ball. He's a little too cocky with the ball. <clears throat> he's a little too he, he gives interceptions up. And he's a little too over emotional as a quarterback. So take it out of his out of his hands and give it to the running game. When they did that, you start seeing the wins pile up. Now they're winning against teams that are, you know, they they can't wins against teams that are struggling. But when they face off against teams that know what they're doing, they lose. They lost to Baltimore. They lost to Pittsburgh. They're still not there yet. So that's what I'm saying. It's a part of it. You will always beat the teams who don't have it figured out because nine times out of ten, they'll beat themselves. Like in the Chicago game, they imploded in the third quarter. And and, and into the and then they open then that was the opportunity to swoop in and stump them out if you had killer instinct. Instead, you you milled about and you allowed them to get back into the game to the point where they made it an overtime game. I don't think that should be celebrated. I think that is, and that shows me the mentality moving forward that's very concerning to me because ultimately people are like, yeah, we got it, we win it. But at the same time, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, man, this is something troublesome because I know what you're going to get against Seattle. I know what you're going to get against these the Green Bay and all these other playoff teams that's going to come. When you meet the Arizonas with Kyler Murray, these teams don't make those type of mistakes. They're good football teams. Good, fall, good football teams know what they're doing. And if you're a struggling football team and you're not fixing the problems, they don't go away. And they'll magnify against, against teams that know what they're doing. Matter of fact, good teams will make your mis miscues be modified. I mean, magnified. Go ahead, Gundam. Well, see, and, 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 that's, and that's the thing. I just want to piggyback off of that. You know, I, I think that Dennis Allen doesn't have the decision-making process. He just doesn't get it. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, and, and I say that because we've got some dogs and he just doesn't know how to utilize them. Now, I don't know if it's the scheme or what, uh, even something to piggyback off of what you, you were saying about the arrogance. You know, I was noticing a press conference, just the smugness and the arrogance. Mm -hmm. Very smug, you know, very arrogant. Uh, and the other thing is doesn't want to change. Because it's Dinosaur. going to be my way or or, or, or the highway, mm -hmm. uh, and well, because I, I don't know if you remember when we were getting ready for the Vikings playoff game last year, the Viking coach goes, "I'm not worried about him. We'll beat them." 
Yep. I was like, <laughs> Yep. And they oh thought he God. was just talking mess. He was just talking mess. But it's the same thing, though, Gunner, because Zimmer knows Sean Payton's egotistical. And that he will, knowing that he, you beat that team running the ball. Yes, all he had to do was run. They could not stop the run. People say, QD was running the ball. No, running the ball, putting your, two, your tight end package in there and the fullback and Latavius and beat it down their throats. If you'd have done that, you would have definitely won the game. As opposed to Drew Brees trying to do it. At 40 years of old, he can't even scramble. The guy catches him, flips him upside down like a pancake. Ball comes out. They get the ball back and kill your, your hopes. And I'm saying if you you got to rely, if you got a 40, he was 40 last year. He's 41 this year. So he's he's a step slower than what he was last year. So you right, don't want him right. throwing the ball 40 times a game. I was saying that's like, listen, keep his reps down to 25 to 30 pass attempts a contest. It's like, well, Q, why you why? – we win it, we win it. But I said everything happens at a cost. That's how the universe – and that's how the universe operates. You're not going to gain without giving something to gain. So if you want to gain to be successful, what are you right. going to give? You're going to either have to give time. You got to give work. You're going to have to spend some time away from your family members. You have to stop watching television for a while so you get your study on. You have to give something mm. so that you can elevate. You can't just keep That's everything right. and elevate. If you really, if you really believe in greatness, you got to give up some of the things that you have to do for a short while, so you can at least elevate to the point where you could be able to be elite. You don't just wake up and you're elite. Elite takes a great deal of work, and you have to work harder than your adversaries that you're facing. If they're outworking you, they're going to beat you. So if they're preparing better than you, they're going to beat you. And I'm saying from hey. a hysterical standpoint, the three point wins, the last uh, three of them, Gundam, is you winning these games barely because you are making mistakes and the team is beating itself. The Chargers literally lost the game because they missed a the field goal. What if they had hit that field goal? It could have been a different Ooh. outcome. So, I mean, it's, it's, well, it's, it's insane. But go ahead, my brother. No, no. The, the, you know, the thing is, another thing that's frustrating was uh, you had brought up, uh, what's his name? Uh, is it is it Quan Johnson, the uh, six feet four, uh, two hundred thirty a uh, wide receiver for the Saints? Jawan Johnson. Jawan Johnson. Right. Uh, and this is like back in the summer. He's like, hey, this guy. I saw him do a slant pass where he adjusted his body. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm just saying that we've got talented young talent. We've got some games coming up that we could do some tune up games and really see where our young guys are at. Get yeah. them some touches. Right. You know, because I see these other teams that they're getting their young rookies involved. You know, and I understand that that you got your guy, right? But you're gonna need a lot of talent for the playoffs, and that's one thing that I've never seen the Saints done except in 2009 was utilizing everybody to make this run. You know, because if you just constantly rely on, on the same old players, I mean, teams can adjust for that. Correct. Yeah. And you, you, you know, so. Um, I mean, that's it, you know, Big Q. That's all I got. You know, I just want to say thank you for having me on. Uh, I'm going to sit back and uh, listen to the show. But but, but thank you so much for, for, for giving me a, a forum. No problem, Gunner. Thank you for your support, my brother. And I uh, appreciate you for chiming in. And who that to you, bro? All right, brother. Who that, man? Who that? That's Brother Gundam. Uh, really great family members chiming in today on the show. Iceman, Brother Paul, Revolt. And, of course, uh, Brother Gundam, man, popping in on the great St. Thank Tank Sports Call. Very much love to the family members. I appreciate you guys as well. And like I said, without the family members, this would not be possible, you know, as we continue to grow and move forward. So I thank all the family members involved, man. It's three hours, three hours, uh, over three hours of show today. Isn't that fast? See how that runs when you're having fun? And we started off with the dollar. The, and once again, i like to give a shout out for today's special guest, the Dollar Tree Quartet. If you missed them, family, you missed a very good song by the Dollar Tree Quartet. And that, of course, is our secondary members, cornerbacks, the, all the cornerback crew behind Chauncey Garner Johnson, Laddie Daddy, and the Jack Rabbit. These are you guys. We got Pat Robertson there. We got there. He's the deep voice singer. You got uh, Justin Hardy right there. You got Ken Crawley and PJ Williams there. They are the Dollar Tree Quartet. And as you can see behind them, you have Aaron Glenn, who's got their back. And, of course, Dennis Salen's back there as well, showing up. And as you can see, he matching with them a, a little bit. <laughs> so big ups to the Dollar Tree Quartet for chiming in and bringing some 
uh, some fun action today for the show. And that was real fun, family. I appreciate the Dollar Tree Quartet guys for dropping by and having fun and covering the show because they damn sure can't cover a bed, so they might as well do something with their ass, right? <laughs> and then, of course, family, they told us they'll be back at another time. Anytime they want us to sing for them, they'll come back at a later date just to let the family members know that they'll be coming back at a later date. So, you know, just be looking out for them down the line, the Dollar Tree Quartet. So we thank them very much. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I'd like to thank all the family members for chiming in on this edition of the sport of the show. Feel free to go to the, the uh, Pro Shop. There are two links in the chat where you can check out the gear, the latest two gear uh, shirts available. Uh, two rushes, first down. Two rush, first down. And we ain't building spaceships, man. Run the ball. So that's a big part of it. You can feel free uh, to chime in and go to the pro shop. Uh, links is in the chat below and check out all the latest gear. Over 50 designs are available at the pro shop. They continue to grow. We got a fire new hat designs coming out too, family. Really nice hat design. It really coming up soon as the sports coma emblem on top of the black and gold flag with Florida Leafs is fire. And that'll be coming out real soon. Matter of fact, I got, I ordered the, uh, some hats so I can wear and, and style and profile for the family members. So just go to the pro shop and remember all of the support the pro shop gets. If you buy from the pro shop, it helps empower the platform as we move forward. And you know, we do stuff. We got the, the, the apps is available as well. We're working on the Apple app. The Google app is available, the Android app. If you want to download the Sports Coma app, for those who don't know, that's right. We got an app, the Sports Coma app. Go to your Play Store, Play Store on Google and simply put in the Sports Coma app and download it on your phone today and never miss a show again. So we appreciate that. And of course, the iPhone version of the app for the Sports Coma, it will be available not this weekend, but it'll probably be more than likely next middle of uh, probably next Friday. I was looking for this Friday, but they're working on it just to let the family members know they are working on it. Apple's a little bit different than uh, 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 iPhone. I mean, uh, than uh, Android, obviously, but they have a few other little things they got to do. But the team is working on it just to let you know. Also, feel free if you like what we're doing and you enjoy what we're doing. Feel free to join our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash the PRO Media Network. Join there. Check them out. We all and we got unlocked content there as well for you to check out TSC Q and A live. We do that every Tuesday at six p.m. We always have a ball and a blast there. Uh, please feel free to join us, and you can see all that old content and join us on Tuesdays when we go live on our Patreon. And of course, on Q with Big Q, and we working on it, family. It really am. I, I've just been so much busy. I, I should be able to finish it up. I promise y'all guys. GM Kev, I know you're asking about it. I promise I'll have it finished up tomorrow and have it released tomorrow. Uh, just a lot been going on, the election stuff, family stuff, business stuff, you know, a lot of stuff going on. I just hadn't been able to finish it, but I promise I'll knock it out and have it up tomorrow. Then after that, I'll let everybody know when we'll be going because we'll start doing it live where you will cover a topic or talk, talk about news or whatnot. And then you could be able to chime in as well with questions and concerns as well on uh, on Q with Big Q. And also let the family members know big ups to, big ups to our sponsorship at getlifemask.com. 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 You can go there. It's a local company. And they sell all kinds of stuff, all kinds of masks, but they have the LSU Saints and Pelicans masks available. And what make getlifemask.com different is that inside of the mask, behind the mask, they have a nose clip where you can slide a filter. It's the PM2.5 filter that slides in the nose clip behind the mask. And it acts as a filter to actually filter the air that you breathe. In. It's not just a piece of cloth on your face. It actually filters the air. So if you're interested in anything like that, go to getlifemask.com and breathe easy and use the code, the sports coma, one word, low le uh, lowercase letters. The sports coma gets 10% off on the purchase. So I thank all the family members for tuning in and joining us. Who that to you, Kelly Cole? I see your family. Uh, pay attention, 26. Foxy, I see your fam. Much love to you as well. Appreciate you for stopping by. Foxy's new to the family, uh, uh, family. so give Foxy love and all of our new family members uh, who's joining the stream, stream as well. Ronyel, who that to you, Ronyel? Big ups to you. Good to see you in the chat as well. Big ups to the family members for joining. So all of our new family members, 
that are chiming in. Give them some love, man. Carlito, good to see you, Carlito. Gary Caraway, who that to you, Gary? I see your family. Big ups to you as well. Good to see you in the chat, my man. Appreciate you being here. Tyrone Jones, I see your fam. Big ups to you and who that to you as well. And, you know, I always give a shout out to all the family members, man. It's about y'all. It's about recognizing the family member, man. Without you guys, we wouldn't be possible. Anthony Connerly, big ups to you as well, family, and thank you. So big ups to all of our good family members and new and established family members for joining us in the stream today. And remember, we'll be back on our Thursday show to cover more Saints news and notes tomorrow. So be just remember to hit the like button, share the links, and uh, remember that we'll return tomorrow. Who that to you? And I'll see y'all later. Yeah. Well, all right. Like you always say. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Number one sports talking Indeed. D. Uh. We ain't like the Falcons. We won't blow the lead. Look, all we talk is who that? Uh. Who got cut and who back? Uh. Rookies in the vents. Uh. Players you should look at. Yeah. It's the sports coma. You don't want to miss it. Got the pre-game, party, post-game statistics. Get a visit for Sway. Maybe DC or five. It's the hottest thing smoking. Big Q in the guys. Go to YouTube and live. Make sure you subscribe. In the views inside the Saints locker room high. Talk to Drew, Jordan, Zach, Peyton. New Orleans, who that nation? Best believe when I say we bleed gold and black. Ain't a miracle or robbery could ever hold us back. No. Quake, bounty gate, let the truth be told. It's the sports coma. All we know is say Super Bowl. Yeah. You're listening to the sports coma.